Welcome to the On The Hunt Podcast. This is your boy, Bobby Bless, the number one Lions fan you probably know. I'm here today with my brothers. We ain't been together in a while, but we all here together. Shoot, I'm happy to see everybody, too. Uh, starting off with the numbers guru. We ain't seen him in a couple of weeks, so I want to make sure I give a shout out to my big brother first, Reggie Funches, with the numbers. The resident defensive coordinator, Nate Brucker, always got something scheming with that defense. And, of course, the hostess with the mostest, Elijah Winfrey, from uh, the creator of Winfrey Studios, Elijah Winfrey Studios. How are everybody doing? What's going on? I am doing very well, my friend. Nate, how you doing? Hey, I am great. The Four Horsemen, we back. We riding again. Yeah, Reggie, what up, though, cousin? Workman, workman, yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so before we get into the contest this morning, you know, now that Reggie is with us, Reggie, I don't know how much you can share about your job or how much is, you know, classified top secret. Um, I'm not sure how that whole situation is. But first, I just want to say congratulations on the new job, my friend. And what can you tell us about it? What do you feel comfortable telling us about it? Well, I am the new events supervisor for Wayne State University. So I handle events that basically from the Motor City Cruise to uh, we just had the Detroit PSL Championship at the Fieldhouse. Uh, so I got to take care of the event aspect of it, parking, tra transportation, and then on top of that, I got to go see the game <laughs> after nice. our sponsorship. So um, it's a beautiful opportunity. You know, of course, I get the, my education paid for. So, hey, you know, that's, that's always nice. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm going to so, go up there like, hey, I know Reggie Fun. You know Reggie Fun. <laughs> I know Reggie Fun. <laughs> <laughs> like I know Reggie <laughs> we, we, yeah, so, We're going to have a live yeah. episode from Wayne State. I'm just kidding. I don't know. Well, I, well, 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 <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm really excited. I get to, you know, be as close to my 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 other favorite team, the Pistons, as close as I can get right now. Um had matter of fact, I just seen Rob Murphy uh on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, big bro. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but uh it's a beautiful opportunity for me and my family. So I'm 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 excited. Well, congratulations again, Reggie. Well, obviously, we're, we we knew something was in the works, but we didn't we didn't want to say mm -hmm. what it was because we didn't know what it was. But congratulations mm -hmm. once again, my friend. And with that, uh, we're hoping to be able to spread some more congratulations out to the winner of our contest. We have been doing this contest for such a long time. Uh, <laughs> I was just talking to the guys about that before we went on the air today. Uh, we are trying to give away. An Apple Series 3 watch, and we said we were going to do it once we hit 350 subscribers. Right now, we are in agony because we are at 341 subscribers, and for whatever reason, it just feels like we're stuck there. Uh, I did do a little research and come to find out 60% of the people that watch our episodes week in and week out don't subscribe. So if you are one of those people in that 60%, I know you've been stopping by and you've been seeing if you like it. I hope you do hit that subscribe button so that maybe we can give this thing to you again. Or, how may you do it. or maybe you need a tutorial on how to do it. Like, <laughs> like, like, maybe. I don't know. I saw that and I went, are you serious? Hey, so, you know, hey, listen, they might as well just go ahead and just, this is just a way for Bobby just to go ahead and just send it to me, you know. <laughs> Hey, after uh, talking uh, so uh, much trash, you could call him the garbage man. Listen, somebody, yeah. somebody beat him, please. All right. All you have to do to do that is you got to get us new subscribers and they have to let us know that you were the one that brought them. Okay. Uh, otherwise, Nate's going to get an Apple watch and he's already, he already has one. He's going to be looking like Flavor Flav, just watches all over the place. Anyway, oh, man. Uh, <laughs> bling, bling. Every time I come around the corner, bling, bling. Oh, <laughs> hey, so we have got a lot to get to on today's show. And what we're going to do right now is we're actually going to uh, pin Nate here on camera 
So I am going to remove the pin here for everybody else. And then Nate is going to bring us on as he sees fit, because we have got a lot of news happening with our Detroit Lions. A lot of news, a lot of rumors. I think we got a rumor to start things off first, right, Nate? Yeah. You know, right now, man, um, the big name out there is being Jalen Ramsey. Um, as people know, I mean, Ross St. Brown has reached out to him. You know, come on, come join us. You know, he's been mocked to us, you know, as a possible landing spot on more than a few occasions, you know, as the team who's most likely to land them. One thing about that is we pretty much know that 70% of the time it's never, ever comes true. Like, they have a guy going to the Bears and he ends up in Miami. You're like, dude, I didn't. Oh, well, you know, we had a surprise team jump into the fold. So, <laughs> as yeah. right, you know, you know, the guy is Jalen Ramsey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my screen ready and we're going to talk, show you guys a little bit of what you get from with Jalen Ramsey. You know, just, man, the type of athlete that you, you know, and I'm going to throw some numbers out here. So. This is his career stats, man. 452 tackles, two sacks, seven forced fumbles, 92 pass deflections, 19 interceptions, and one defensive touchdown. Now, and when you – Jalen Ramsey, when he was coming out, he was what you would call a technician at corner. You know, he didn't run a 4-3, even though he was a former track guy and a relay sprinter. You know, he he ran a 4-4-1 coming out, but he weighed, you know, at 6'1", 200 pounds, running a 4-4-1. You know, that is, man, when you look at, you look, you, when you look at a physical corner with good technique, the ability to completely take one wide receiver out of the game, he does have that type of gameplay, you know. Um, coming out, he ran a 4.18 in the shuttle and a 6.94 in the cone drill. So I'm going to start with our numbers guy, Reg. What do you, if, if you had a guy to, let's say Jalen Ramsey reminds you of, who would it be? Jalen Ramsey. That's a good question. Um. Hmm. Well, the thing on that one. Okay. But, Elijah. But you but you know what? I do like the fact that he responded to Amin Ra. Agreed. So he didn't like say, all right, man, I ain't coming to Detroit. He said, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. essentially so many words. I can't really talk about where I'm gonna go or what I'm gonna do. He didn't throw it out there like he couldn't, he like he wasn't thinking about coming. Um, and you gotta think about it right now. This is the stuff that we was anticipating with the way that this year, like you start attracting players of, of this caliber because they see something special brewing and they want to be a part of it. And actually, he's a part of a team that's right now on the down tick. Like the Rams ain't as good as they used to be. Oh, I wonder fucking why. But anyway, yeah. go, ahead. go there. Yeah, I wonder yeah. why. I had a good day. Let's not go there. <laughs> 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 Thanks, man, Reggie. Oh, I can't wait. But yeah, uh, yeah. So, let me think about who I think it would be, though. Okay, that's fine. So, Elijah, what are your thoughts on it? Um. So for me, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what happened here, Nate. My apologies. Uh. So, uh, dude, it's not. I think I think I got to figure it out. So anyway, um. So for me, I'm a little conflicted because. Jalen Ramsey is not necessarily a young player. Uh, he's 28 years old, and much like running backs, cornerbacks don't seem to age very well oftentimes uh, in the league. And I was trying to figure out what does his situation remind me of, and here's what I came up with, and I'm not – I want to be very clear here. I am not saying these two players play like each other. I'm saying their situations are similar. I've done that before on the show, and then people have said, ah, oh, that guy doesn't play like the other guy. 
Again, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying situationally, these are similar. So for me, my, my, uh, my similarity here would be Charles Woodson. When he went from the Raiders to the Packers, um, when Charles Woodson made that move, he was 30 years old when he went to the Green Bay Packers. And he was brought in not just to play well, but to help bring up the rest of the Packers secondary that was kind of young at the time and try to help them, you know, get along and get, you know, get better quickly uh, in the league. Uh, Ramsey's 28. He's going to be 29 during the season. And if you look at their height and weight, I mean, Woodson was 6'1", 210. Ramsey's 6'1", 208. So for me, I kind of view this, if the Lions do bring him in, they're bringing him in to do what Charles Woodson did for the Packers. That's that's my that's my connection uh, that I have for you guys. So I'm just curious here, uh, Nate. Uh, what what do you think, my friend? Um, that that's a very good point. First of all, I'm kind of stuck. I don't know why my feed went out, but <laughs> we're just going to leave it on on our shared screen for now until I figure out what the uh visual issue is but it is definitely along along that lines i think about what he can teach what he can bring as far as technique as far as um um development as far as preparation you know just the way Jalen ramsey goes about getting ready for these elite guys and you know staying mentally and physically prepared for this game you know to to have the type of success that he has had and you know especially over the long period of time you know he, he he's always been a top five corner since he's been drafted so also he can teach these guys about living up to the hype that's one of the hardest things is living up to the hype of being you know, so so called so for you know the best corner. You know, a lot of guys get taken, you know, first, second corner off the board, and they never live up to it. So you're talking about a guy who was a high school, top high school cornerback, a top college cornerback, and then transitioned to the NFL to be a top cornerback. So that's you know big for me. Now, Bobby, what do you think about that? And also. Also, Bobby, I know you got a thought process on that hater we had out there that's hating on that little tweet. Oh, yeah. Uh, first, let, I'm going to say what I got to say about Jalen Ramsey. I'm, I'm, I'm good for it. I'm good for him because all the stuff you said about his teaching ability and all that stuff, but, you know, he typically played one side of the field. You know what I mean? So as bad as that secondary has been, to know that we got one side of the field locked up, that gives us less to worry about a month. And not to not to mention though this too, and people fail to realize. Remember a couple of years ago, he had a list of all the quarterbacks, like oh he whack, he whoop, he did whoop whoop. So that means he's studying. So he probably got yeah. something on everybody. You see, so when he he gonna be the one in the defensive room, hey, I got this, you know. He, he 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 got the quarterback's foul, so I would love to see him. And and he a guy he get mad when he lose. You feel me? I I always like the guys to get mad. So that it, it's a plus, but it, you know it's all about money. You know I don't I ain't trying to make him the richest corner ever in history. So it's all about money. But so, like Bobby, Elijah said he ain't question. no spring chicken though. Bobby, just a quick question for you and really for everybody. When it comes to Jalen Ramsey. Obviously, he's he's displayed ability his entire career. I'm not trying to say he's not a good player. But I think there is something to be said about bringing in veterans and bringing in the right veteran. Because Jalen exactly. is not somebody to hold his tongue. If he, if you, You're right. He hates losing. So if he comes in and he starts disagreeing with Dre Bly about how to run the defense or how to run that room, like – I worry that that could be a bad situation. And but I see, if we actually, but that's when, yeah, I, I feel you, but that's when the uh, former players being coaches come in to play. You know what I mean? Exactly. They know, they, they, they know how to uh, 
sugarcoat or you know they know where he's coming from. They I honestly I think those as well as Jalen Ramsey has been in the NFL, I think he would be a guy that they would be open ear to his thoughts about a lot of stuff because he he's a real intelligent cornerback. So I feel like he can bring more to the table even in the um coaching room too. But you know, it's all about attitude and stuff mixing. But like, like, like I said earlier, that's why we got all these former players. <laughs> you know about egos. They know how to come. They know how to come, come at uh, Jalen Ramsey. And then, uh, even I think Jalen Ramsey is the type of guy that will inspire the guys around him too. I, mm-hmm. I feel like even his pure, his pure passion is. Uh, infectious, you know, it might light light a fire under some guys. And you, uh, Jeff Okuda got all the talent in the world, you know what I mean? But he just haven't been able to put it together all the way with a, in a consistent nature. So, you know, uh, with Jalen Ramsey, I'm pretty sure he got consistent routines that made him the player he is and maybe that uh, uh, up the guys around him. He'll be a real, he, he'll not only be a leader, but he'll be a teacher too. So, yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely agree. I and mean, then you talk about again, one of the things that makes players respect the coaches is that I have to be able to look at you and be like, you know what, you somebody that was somebody. It's different for me taking crap from somebody who was somebody versus somebody who was a nobody. Right. You see oh, what I'm poor saying? Belichick. Yeah, poor yeah. Belichick so, coffee and making so sure it's dark. At Dre oh, Bly, Elijah, if you could pull that uh that, that screen I have up, I think actually I think I have it shared. Hold on, is it still up? Uh so you you just got a screen share again and then it'll pop up for all of us. Oh, okay. My bad, my bad, my bad. I'm getting some still getting new to this, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, it freaked me out too because because on my screen, all of a sudden. It was just me, and that's not usually what I was like. Oh man, my hair's a mess. <laughs> uh, we got Nate sharing the screen again. It should be popping up for everyone to see in the audience. Uh, and again, yeah. hey, if things go wrong, it's okay. It's okay. But it's looking pretty good on the screen right now, Nate. So go ahead. Okay. So what we're talking about? You're talking about a guy in Dre Bly who played 11 seasons, 383 tackles. 55 assists, he had five sacks, 12 fumble recoveries, 43 interceptions, two that's pro a, balls, man, that's a lot of turnovers, and man. one ring. Now, here's the thing. He also had a, a total of 132 pass breakups. You know, so, you know, Dre Bly was a guy, if people remember, he was a gambler. They talked about it. You know, he's how people look at Trayvon Diggs being a gambler, the, the difference is Dre Bly wasn't giving up all these yards that Trey, I mean, Dre Bly give up all the yards Trayvon does, but he was definitely a gambler. So, look, you know, look, and at, the, look at 2005, 2000, and, look at 2005. Oh my Listen. God, he was doing his thing. Listen, <laughs> Dre Bly was. You know, you like you say, six interceptions, fifty. You, know, I mean, like, look at the past breakups, man. He had what is that? Yes. So that means how many? How many? He only gave up fifty yards, fifty-four yards for the whole season. Is that what Listen, that means? No, 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 no. That's that's his return yardage. Your return off yardage. His oh, oh, I'm about to say, man. No, what the no. <laughs> no, no, but. That also was a Pro Bowl year for him as a Lion, though. He did go to the Pro Bowl in 2005. That year, he also yeah. had four forced fumbles, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. So that gives – so when you're talking about going into, um, you know, meetings and things of that nature, I don't think you run into that. I think everything is going to be good. Everything should be copacetic because, you know, Jalen Ramsey is looking at a former pro bowler and a former top corner in the league who was successful. And he's got a ring. 
plus and Pro Bowl. Aaron Glenn. And Aaron Glenn. Aaron and Glenn, then on, and on top of that, this is the key for me. What do I say about availability? Right, your, best, your ability. best ability. Yeah. So guess what? Starting from two, starting from 1999, Drake lost 16 games, 16 games, 16 games, 16 yeah. games, 14, 13, 16, 16, 16, and 16. So Dang, he, he also was a guy who was available. Who also you talk about keeping up your body. You're talking about all this. So this is something that goes perfect with Jalen Ramsey about being available, mm -hmm. being healthy, being to, you know, as a corner, playing as much as he did. And if people remember, Dre Blah didn't play zone. Dre Blah was a man up corner. So okay. that's key. It's not like he was getting a rest, you know, where he dropped back and just sat in the flat. No, Dre Bly was a man of Warner. So that's good, man. So, uh, yeah. to, you know what? Reggie, what you got, dog? I've been sitting over here racking my brain of who he reminds me of. And to tell you the truth, the guys that, that were coming to mind, I'm like, well, he has one aspect of their game and not another aspect, right? Okay. So I thought about Richard Sherman. He, he has good size, great size. Um, he wasn't the fastest guy. He was like a four or five, something like that. Um, so of course, you know, um uh, Richard Jaylen Sherman was so Rich, 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 well Richard Sherman was a four seven. <laughs> and that's the crazy thing about it though, but he will turn you over. Yeah, like, yeah, he's got over his 40 height, he's length. got over 40 interceptions in his career. Yes. Yeah, so he, I'm you know, say, and, he had good hands too. And, and, yeah, and Jay, he's only got 19 interceptions over his career. So I, I was thinking about that. You know, I thought about Marcus. They ain't coming towards him all the time. See, but that's that, and, and that's he the, doesn't that's get the challenged though. Of it. That's the other aspect yeah. of it. So, like, we start thinking about who Jalen Ramsey is. I would say Jalen Ramsey is Jalen Ramsey. Right. He's a he's I a agree. guy that I'm I will go out and try to get because I know he can make a difference on my defense. He's providing me something right. that I don't have. Somebody that can actually shut down the side of the field. And which also, like you said, it Reggie, better for yeah. somebody like a cool. Like you said, yeah. big dog, it, with the success we start getting these players that we normally mm. wouldn't be able to get in the previous and, position. And and hey. that's the whole reason why the atmosphere, the environment, why it was so important. For them to pull out this season the way that they did because people are looking. Yeah. yeah. Now, so, so, he, so, he, somebody so, said, so, so like I was gonna say, if some, I was gonna say, if somebody said what what Amir Ross said ten years ago, mm. ten years ago, what would be the response? Oh, oh nothing. Like, it, 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 yeah, it wouldn't even yeah. have to even been responded to. It and, and that, oh, but hey, they still saying that. <laughs> like, I, like Nate was mentioned, talked about a little bit earlier. Uh, Michael Parsons retweeted that Jalen Ramsey uh, acknowledging St. Brown. And mm -hmm. uh, Michael Parsons tweeted, why would anybody leave L.A. to go to Detroit? So it's still, this narrative so, ain't all the way gone. So, so you, you, still you know what, Bobby? It reminds me of a couple of other situations that happened in Detroit history. If you remember, well, you probably don't remember. It didn't really matter to you, but. The Tigers were one of the worst back baseball teams in the league. Back when? But for some years. When? This is in the early 2000s. Oh, yeah, I know yeah, where you're yeah, going. I know where you're going. When I was a baby. When I was a baby. We, 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 we were able to bring in one particular player that nobody told where you going. Get. His name was Pudge Rodriguez. Yeah. Reggie, I, I connect baseball cards. I okay. know all. Oh, so so yeah, so you know, so you know, yeah. There you go. That, that, that's the connect. I was waiting for the connection to be, to be made. Yeah, I know. So I know. Pudge Rodriguez came and helped not just turn around the culture, but the outlook of the Tigers to the rest of the nation. Yeah, he was. Everybody else was saying, you know what? That's he the place to play at. So who was next? Maglio Ordonez. Maglio. <laughs> And once you so, start getting players like that, that's when you start saying, you know what? Maybe that's a place where I want to be. And that's what I'm hoping is starting to be that shift for the Lions right now, where players are saying, you know what? Yeah. Let me go take point, a chance. Let me go take a chance. Let me go see. And it, it kind of reminds you a little bit of college football recruiting, because like mm -hmm. when a when a new coach comes in, 
you know, one of the things they always say is, you know, we got to get ourselves a four star or a five star in that first recruiting cycle, because once you get that first kid, then yeah, other problem. people are like, okay, well, I didn't realize that was an option. Um, but now I'm going to go take a look at it, you know. Um, you know the funny thing is? Colorado just did it with a coach. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like Colorado, Colorado's going to be dangerous. Look, I mean, they they're going to be really, well, really good. Like this they, is really, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna they, get might, they might damn well win their their conference next year. Hey, I mean, what, I, what conferences are they in? They in the Big Pac 12, Twelve, I believe. Pac, oh, Pac yeah, Pac Twelve now, which makes yeah. no sense. But they're in the yeah, Pac yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't just area. Area. But but here they like, used to be in the Big Twelve though, right? Yeah, they moved around quite a bit. It moved. Yeah, the last so, time I remember, it was in the Big 12. Okay, so here's my, the second as we talked about the attitude, but I'm looking at what do you guys think, not just the way that he prepares. Like, because right. we know Jalen Ramsey and his interviews can be quite devious. Yeah. We, we <laughs> know this. But the way that he's a guy who doesn't, interview the way he plays because mm -hmm. Jalen Ramsey doesn't play like a diva he oh, he right. yeah. he do not, no he don't so, try from contact no, right yeah, right right so so how do you think that type of physicality is going to completely rub off on the entire team as far as running through guys and putting them on the ground hard Eliza start with you dog Okay. Uh, so for me, I would say he's somebody who you're either going to be his teammate or he's going to take your job. That's the way I look at it. Um, because right. there's going to be a lot of people, if we do end up getting Jalen Ramsey, and again, this is a hypothetical, um, but if we do end up getting him, you're going to have some cornerbacks who, while they might be excited on the outside, cause they got to say what they got to say for, you know, uh, public perception on the inside, they're going to be like, wait a minute, is this guy going to come in and take my job? And, and I think that that can either go two ways. Either you're going to make somebody uh, kind of, you know, uh, delete themselves from the situation, meaning, you know, that they, they have a bad year, they overthink it, they get cut in the preseason. Or uh, you end up saving somebody's career because they learn how to prepare like a Super Bowl champion and it makes them better for it. And immediately, like as you guys are talking about Dre Bly, you guys are talking about Jalen Ramsey, I'm thinking about, a warrior and i don't know that he's gonna make the team next year or he's still gonna be on the team next year but if he is i think dre black could save that man and you can might man I, man because like nate like what nate always say man I, he has never i don't think nobody has nate how you say it? you have never seen someone like a uh, 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 carrier is who we talk about oh man so good yeah, yeah, i've never so seen that yeah, I've never seen nobody regress a corner. Do you think Dre Black can help him? Who was in line? He, he was, huh? You think Dre Black can help him? Say it again. You think Dre Black can help him? Yes. Yes, I think, the thing about Warrior, I oh, think God. it was something that was mentally going on with him. Mm -hmm. um, because his his when you watching his technique was off it's not like he was bad physically it was he was having mental lapses where he wasn't maybe he 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 wasn't trusting his technique he got to thinking too much his focus was off like as a corner you 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 know there are certain things that define you as a corner mm -hmm. You're a press guy or a zone guy. Like you are this guy from Pee Wee until wherever level you get to. So now what coaches do is they put you in different schemes to maximize what you do well. It was right. to the point where it was like, he forgot how to run. He forgot yeah. how to run. He didn't know how to how to find the ball. And these were things of him coming out of Penn State that he did well, this which is dude, why I say it was mental. Hey, what game, hey, Nate, what game was it where he was racing the dude down the damn field? I can't remember. Oh, it wasn't even tackling. 
Whenever somebody becomes a healthy scratch at a position where we need help, that's bad. Especially yeah. coming up a year where you had a great year. Eight interceptions, I think. Yeah, eight. <laughs> and, and that's and that's why I was thinking about it. Was I was like, well, he he did prove that he could get all those interceptions. But you, but you, know, a but you know, my like thing is, block. Elijah. Uh, you know, my thing is, when you bring in somebody like Jalen Ramsey, it's put up or shut up. Right. Yeah. It's right. just put he, up or shut up. Like, be the I, greatest teammate, he did, or he's going to take your job. It, it, look, I don't care. And it, that's one of them situations. Where I don't care what he does because this dude is proven. Right. Mm-hmm. Like this guy's coming in. I don't care. Warrior, uh, Hughes. I don't, I don't care. Guess what? Man, Step he was up. racing, dude. Well, I've been done with him since because that. We, 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 I we think a, that I think that was the <laughs> Miami game. I think I might and be done with it. It, 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 was, it, it was on the kick return. <laughs> it was real. Miami game. It was on the hey, kick return. Racing. And he was running side by side with the guy instead of tackling him. I was like, dude, what is going on right now? <laughs> so, yeah. Reggie, but Reggie, you were you were you were finishing your thought, my friend. Yeah. Oh, my bad, big dog. I, I, I will tell you this. If you bring in somebody like that, you're telling the rest of the league that we're trying to make a transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Being a problem. And any player that's on the team that's worried about, oh, is he coming to take my spot? You don't need to be here. Right. You're trying to get some dogs in here. You're trying to get, oh, Jalen gonna have to battle me for my spot. That that's the that's the mind frame that you gotta have. Warrior should be thinking about how he can reseize the type of season that he had and say, I'm gonna be that guy opposite of Jalen. Right. Right. That, that's right. the attitude right. I want to see out of out of a player like that. And, and any he, other player. And you bring up a great point, Reggie, because it, it kind of leads to a bigger question that was not on our paper, and I don't want to take us too far in the left field here, but you know me as well. Right. Um, is this our window? Because, I mean, that that is yeah. a conversation because people are looking at it going, okay, uh, year two was a much greater success than it was supposed to be on paper. I know that everyone got emotional, uh, you know, midway through the season and thought we were going to the Super Bowl and everything else but like if you look at what they actually expected us to do we exceeded those expectations last season so a lot of people I hope some people want some money right well well, and and like I said there's there's a lot of people right now who are asking questions saying is this the Super Bowl window for the Detroit Lions so so I guess the question is for management do they want to go for it right now or do they want to keep building hey Elijah I would tell you this brother I would look at it this way. It started with hard knocks. That gives you that national exposure. Right. Mm-hmm. You come out of the gate with issues, injuries, mm-hmm. talent, trying to figure out your system. And you start to lose a little bit of that focus that you started developing. But yeah. but but even sure. even though that we we still in games. Still in but, games. But, 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 Going through all that, but, still in games, almost but winning. How, but you know how the media is. They look at record and that's it. They don't they, they right. don't read much substance. But then what starts to happen? Man, they beat them. Man, they beat somebody yeah. else. Man, they beat somebody else. Look at man, they don't want how many in the room. Right. That's where we that, come in. Yeah. That's where the little guys, mm-hmm. that's where we come in and we have our segments and mm-hmm. we tell our fan bases, hey, y'all. Chill out. <laughs> Hold on. Mm-hmm. Like the season's not over. And yeah. then we have to, you know, that's like if people remember when we did our midseason show, what mm-hmm. did uh, Eliza spoke on it perfectly? Listen, y'all. Hey, hard knocks. That's where everybody mm-hmm. fell in love. Now, the same thing we said, hey. You cannot, just because you fell in love with what you've seen on Hard Knocks does not change the players that we have, does not change the talent gap, does not change the learning curve. Mm -hmm. This is all still there. So you have to give this stuff time. It's just not. Oh my mm-hmm. God, we're we're you know, one and see, six. See, now, 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 though, now though, you got people though. impatient, but see now you got people impatient because of success, like Reggie's saying. But that, mm-hmm. but that's the kicker though too, because with that success, it comes that exposure, 
which becomes the interest. So, exactly. you guys, so now when you're in the playoffs, you hear guys like Romo and all these other announcers making statements like, I don't think this team wanted to see Detroit. Well, I don't yeah, think and the main reason why now, I know that's true. There's, yeah. there's everybody that was at home is listening to this, players included. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great players. Right. So when they start hearing stuff like that, like, you know what? Yeah. You might be mm-hmm. right. So hey, well, it is this funny. Is, this is it, that it, window. It's funny. So many saying. times it was referenced. Right. That's what I'm saying. This is the window yeah, because yeah. the interest is peaked. The money is looking right. A couple of other decisions. You got a great draft coming in. So now what none of those the teams in the NFC scored up. Yeah. None of those teams in the NFC played the Eagles better than the Lions. Kansas City used the play that the Lions used on the Eagles in the last drive to win the Super Bowl. So we in the right direction. People know it, man. So when you start imitating, that means you're on the right road, man, because it, that, that's be, what we need. To be honest, Nobody it was only two games. Not the Lions playbook. It was only Nobody two games. Really Lions playbook as well. It was only two games where we really got crushed. You're like, man, that's looking bad. It was against <laughs> New yeah. England. It was New England. Yeah. And it, was, it was against yeah. the Panthers. Outside of that, there was not one game where I'm like, dang, we couldn't win. We can't win this. Right. I still, right. I still wake up with the cold sweats, you know, from that Carolina game. I'm like, oh my God, he's still running. Oh. Uh, hey, but, but this was damn Saturday, Saturday games. They always empty on Saturday, man. But Saturday. the 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 key, the key, and this is what and why I'm so impressed about. Dan Campbell is, he didn't make any excuses. He got up there. He said, this is what they needed. They needed to get their teeth kicked in. Uh-huh. He yeah, said, they, they, now here's, he, he said, well, hold on. He said, now, it's all about how you come back after getting your teeth kicked in, after you, getting your, after you get your teeth kicked in, how do you come back the very next week? Mm-hmm. They, said the enough, field they was, went to Carolina. It was the field. It was the field. It was the field. Oh, yeah. <laughs> More excuses. More excuses. But Dan Campbell it did all that. Listen, we don't, we, we ain't doing none of this field, all these guns, <laughs> all these cleats. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. There's a bed of nails only when we have the ball. There's a bed of nails under there. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, but yeah, man. So, but, yeah, it's I, all good. you know, that, that that's good about the whole, about Jalen Ramsey, man. I really believe that if he does decide to come here, now here's the kicker, y'all. If we are able to acquire Jalen Ramsey, Y'all each 20 seconds. What do you have to give up for him? Bobby. Uh, so you like if you what are you yeah, saying yeah. Is, draft pick we'll play like what are you willing to give up? To replace Jalen Ramsey. Uh shoot, give me I I I was talking about in our meeting, man. Give me uh, give me a corner, man. I think we need something. No, 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 no. I'm saying no, what pick? Because you, you're going to have to trade for him. He's not a free agent. Oh, oh so, you're not a free agent? No. So you're going to have to trade for him. What are what you 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 got the draft? You got your draft. Oh picks. no! Oh, oh oh well. I I didn't know that. I don't want him. Shit, he ain't worth no pick. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Um, Reggie he ain't worth no picks. Nope. Red, uh, mm-hmm. Reg. He ain't worth no picks to me. Not at all. Reggie is doing a math equation right are, now. Are you, I, you I, got... I, would say, I would have to say a third. No, no, I'm sorry. A second. Like a fifth. A second and a fifth. Okay. A fifth. Elijah? Okay. So I got to go with Bobby on this one. I like my picks. Yeah, way too much. Look, yeah, here's the thing. Here's the thing. When you have a GM who has demonstrated the ability to hit on almost every single pick and create starters out of those people, and you know how the new NFL is, you get four years with a cheap rookie contract before you got to pay these guys a shit ton of money. So for me, I'm just using my picks. I'm hitting on those picks. 
and I'm saving my money uh, to try I to. I thought they were talking free agent, that. man. I, I, uh, yeah. I thought you were talking. Even free if he agent. was a free agent, listen, I, I, I get he's a great player, but I don't think we need him. I think that Dre Bly and Aaron Glenn can develop the guys we already have. Mm-mm. Be the next Jalen Ramsey without having to bring in <laughs> Jalen Ramsey. That's my personal opinion. Mm-mm. I like my no, no, no. Hell no. I love I love you, Elijah. So, sorry, Elijah. So, if anybody loves you, you know what? I love you, man. <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why I disagree with you. Okay, go ahead. So, I have a mind state when it comes to proven versus unproven. Mm. Yes, I do agree that we have a a. a, a we got a decision maker that has hit on a lot of his picks. I get that, but that is rare. That's yeah. not. That's not. That's not the. That's not the norm. And if I have an yeah. opportunity to take my unknown and turn it into a known commodity, you got to jump all over it because right now we're talking about an infusion of talent in a position of need that yeah. you be able to find all the time, but. Counterpoint. Sorry, go ahead, Reggie. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you. I'm thinking. I'm thinking about. You think about like the trade uh, for Marcus Peters. Mm-hmm. You have yes. to. You don't have to give up. You don't have to give up something for it. But think about what you get in return: a guaranteed player at a position that is a playmaker, and you solidify that position. Not a cornerback that I still got to develop and try to figure out who he is, and then uh-huh. hope and pray that he ends up being. What I invested in, like I'm cool. loving this like cool. right now. I got Ben Matlock battling Perry Mason. Let's go. <laughs> oh, okay, oh, Elijah, <laughs> your turn. Get, now, okay. Fight back, Elijah. Fight so, back. Counterpoint. <laughs> counterpoint. Okay. <laughs> Scenario. We we do this. Okay. We give right. them first round picks because you know that's what they're gonna want because they don't have no. Any. They can't get. No, hey, no, 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 I'm no, 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 no. no, no. No, 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 no. Hear me out, though. No first-round picks. Yeah, no. Listen, they have no first-round picks. They're not going to let their premier corner go and not get a first-round pick out of it. They're just not well, I don't want So, for me, here's here's the scenario I'm thinking of, okay? I'm not saying Brad Holmes would, would say, here's your first – here's our two first-round picks. Go ahead. Give us Jalen Ramsey. I don't think he's going to do that. I think he'd give them the lesser of the first-round picks. But my no. concern would be, my concern would be, and why I'm not on the Jalen Ramsey train, Jalen Ramsey comes in. He's going to turn 29 years old during the season. If he starts getting injuries, like a lot of corners do as they start to get older, what did you trade for exactly? Because you already have one of the greatest to ever do it in Dre Bly, who can develop the talent. And you've got Aaron Glenn, who was pretty damn good as well, who can develop the talent. And one of the things that we all talked about a few minutes ago was how, well, you're bringing Jalen Ramsey in to help coach the other guys up. We already got two guys that can freaking do that job. You need people who can be on the field and stay on the field. My concern is as he gets older, he will not be able to do that. Now, obviously, that's a hypothetical because he has stayed on the field for the majority of his career. I would just be concerned that we would give up a first round pick for him because that's what they're going to want and turn around and miss out on somebody who could be really great. I mean, like we so have two first round picks. my counterpoint to that there. Okay. I don't know where Nate went, by the way. You, Nate like disappeared. You, so. you can't have your cake and eat it too. So either you believe in Holmes being a decision maker that could bring in talent. Yeah. You don't. So with that being the case, I get the guaranteed talent. If he starts to age or whatever, guess what? We got picks this, the next year too right. to bring in the type of players. So it's not like I'm taking a loss here. I'm I'm winning regardless because I either I brought in a, either I brought in a guaranteed talent and I won. Yeah, I got to get a peek in, and guess what? I'm bringing in a premier player that can help bring in others. That's yeah. the other. I that's mean, the I, that's where the value really lies. In a perfect world, I, I would I would completely agree with you. However, this is the Lions we're talking about. And I know I'm a Lions fan. I don't mean to, like, shit on my own team. But, like, how many times have these big blockbuster trades actually worked out for us? I'll put it like How many times have we gotten that guy that we thought was going to be great 
and they turn around and they don't do it. Like I can think of immediately. Like, right, for me, I'm for I'm me, I'm gonna go back. I'm, I'm gonna go back I'm to my original. Draft I'm gonna go back I'm to my original draft point. Pick. I don't think he I'm works. Back to my original point. Puz Rodriguez came here when he was 32 years old. Okay. Mm -hmm. He came here when he was 32 years old. Was he still the greatest player? No. No. Was he a really good player? Yeah. Yeah, Right. He was a good player. But he was 32 years old. He had been in the league how long? 13 years at that time? Came in when he was 19? So, when you have somebody like that, you capitalize on the talent that he does have. You capitalize on the experience that he has. You capitalize on the name that he has. Mm-hmm. And all I'm giving up is an unknown because I don't know what the second round pick is. It could be to vie for all I know. Right. Fair point. Fair point. So, like I, said, I mean, I'll, I'll be interested to see what happens with this, but I, <laughs> I, I do not foresee the Rams taking any type of compensation that does not include a first round pick because they and, desperately need one. And, and I'm going to <laughs> record and say it. I don't want to record and say it. If they end up giving up the 18th for him, I'm not tripping. Because usually on the back end, you probably end up getting like a fourth or somewhere or something on the back end from them as well. Right. As conversation. So, like you said, if if Brad Holmes is is the guy that we think that he is, or he's kind of shown so far that he is, yeah. I'm not worried about where he's getting picks at because he's maximizing talent. I mean, we do we've been raving about Malcolm Rodriguez all year. Yeah. He yeah. drafted. I mean, hey, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe it'll work out. Um, like I said, for me though, I just if I'm Brad Holmes, I'm looking at it saying the majority of the teams that have won Super Bowls in recent years have been teams that have got cheap contracts um, with you know players still on their rookie deals, things like that. I mean, Kansas City, yeah, they just won it and they paid Pat Mahomes a crap ton of money. But if you look at his receiving core, uh, majority of his receivers are not big money guys. Um, at least from what I can remember, maybe I'm wrong on that, but I just feel like you, you got to stay young and you got to stay cheap if you want to win in this league right now. And I just would be concerned that getting Jalen Ramsey could hurt our future a little bit. If he, if he has a downturn, he might not, he might be still really young. He's still really young. Right. But, but like, uh, you know, just to, just to say this to your point, Reggie, I mean, you might get Jalen Ramsey and he might end up you know, playing like Charles Woodson did, where he's playing it well into his 30s and he's a great player for the Packers. And that would be a fantastic situation for us. Um, Nate's trying to get in, but every time Nate tries to get in and I let him in, something bad happens. I don't know. So we went from being the four horsemen to the three musketeers really, really quick. There There we go. Nate's back. Okay. Man, it was Luna's doing. So I'm thinking that my phone and everything's plugged up. While she was running around, she done unplugged everything over in the corner, and in the fu- everything just died on me. I was like, "Oh my god!" So you missed <laughs> it. Um, Reggie decided that he agrees with me. Yeah. Okay. Did- <laughs> yeah, he, he was all excited. He's like, "Let's go, guys! Great debate!" And then he goes, "Poof, he's gone." Uh, but anyway. <laughs> So Bobby's okay. telling me that he's got to get going here uh, in about roughly an hour. So we got to keep okay. it moving. Um, all right. All right. So uh, now we're going to head into Reg. Are you still with me? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, guys, oh, our next segment, y'all, is going to be – Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> hold on. Time out for a second because everybody needs to watch Reggie. I'm going to pin Reggie on the screen right now. <laughs> Because because Reggie does not know what subject we're going into next because uh, he, <laughs> he had to work. So I'm going to remove everybody from the screen. We're all looking at Reggie's beautiful face right now because this is a subject oh. that he's going to be excited about. Nate, go ahead and tell him. Well, it's going to be our mock draft thoughts from the professionals. Oh, that's not what I thought it was. Never mind, my bad. I hyped that up way too much. That's not what I thought it was. <laughs> oh, oh no, 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 no. That's not it. That's not that one. That's Bobby's segment. That's next. Okay, so so I'll have to I'll have to do this again uh, here in a little bit, Reggie. But but at least you got. Your I thought point. we were doing the mock draft next. Yeah, we are. We're doing the mock draft next, and then it's then we're the, doing that one. Then we're doing then that. We're one. Doing Nobody's that doing one. the surprise. Dude. I take oh. a break at every day. Hits the fan. 
<laughs> okay. So, hey, hey, we need the number, guy. Okay, so yeah. I'm finna I'm finna give you guys. So I looked at four different networks. Four different networks, four different guys, and I've compared them to like 10 other mocks, right? So Daniel Jeremiah has us taking Miles Murphy, CBS.com, uh, PFF have us taking Dan Devin Witherspoon. I'm sorry, Devon Witherspoon. Draft Network and uh, who is this? Kuiper has us taking Christian Gonzalez with our first pick. Bucky Brooks has us taking Michael Mayer, <laughs> a tight end from Notre Dame at six. So Reggie's already taking it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Reggie, <laughs> which one is the most far fetched in your opinion? <laughs> you really gotta ask me that? <laughs> no. If they pick a tight end at six, <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna be. Pissed off. <laughs> like, I, I cannot describe the level of anger I would have. <laughs> but, but if they pick that tight end and they get Jalen Ramsey, you're going to be happy, right? No, 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 I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> I'm going to be pissed. <laughs> like, uh, no, that, uh, doesn't, okay. that doesn't cancel that out. Sorry. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. Okay. So, that's one. So now the reason why I wanted to do this is because we were mocked with throughout the year to, you know, the true mate, the other guys. We've been mocked at corner multiple times mm -hmm. with three different guys. Yep. Kelly Ringo has definitely um, fell off. He's they're looking at him more so in the second round now, just unfortunately due to how good George's front seven is, so they're saying that's a nap yeah. on him. So now you have the, uh, a Devon Witherspoon and you have Christian Gonzalez. Both of them tall, six foot one. Uh, one is a physical Jalen Ramsey type corner and Devon Witherspoon. Christian Gonzalez is a physical long I will compare him more to not saying he's going to be good at sauce, but just body type sauce is a little taller, but you're looking at a sauce gardener. You're looking at a, a Santi Samuel, uh, you know, guy like that in Christian Gonzalez. So with that being said, Elijah, if you had the choice, what do you think of these two guys? Have you had your time to do your research on these two guys? No, to be completely honest with you, like you said their names and I said, who is she? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, not, not to be flat out disrespectful, but I have no idea who, who the hell these guys are. And I would, okay. caution, I would caution everybody, uh, not to take over the subject, but I would caution everybody out there who might be believing some of these experts, wait until the combine. Because Kelly Ringo, I mean, he's going to blaze at that combine. And when he does, oh, yeah. this conversation is going to be unemployed. It, it, yeah, Kelly Ringo is going to shoot back up. Um, so how are you guys <clears> – <throat> look, are you guys concerned enough with our inept at cornerback to take a corner at six? Mm -hmm. So – all right, so right now, your top five corners in this draft are going to, in no particular order, Christian Gonzalez, Joey Porter Jr., Kelly Ringo, Devon Witherspoon, Cam Smith. No, 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 no particular order. Mm -hmm. So, now, as far as top ten, all of them are, in my top ten talents, in my opinion. Every single one, the only one in my Eyes that is not truly top 10 is Joey Porter Jr. 
Um, Joey Porter Jr. is not a ball hawk. I think he's got one interception total. Um, to me, he's not the best cornerback even on that team. It puts us back at the what same school thing for me. What's going on? Uh, Penn State. Penn State. Oh, okay. Um, say now he's the same type of corner as a warrior. So there's not saying, hey, they're one of the same, same school, same type of playing style, same type of body weight. Only different was a warrior, um, in my opinion, has better hands coming out than Joey Porter Jr. does. Like to me, it's like Noah Fant and TJ Hawkinson, where I said, hey, Joey Porter's or TJ Hawkinson's getting all the love, but he's not even the best tight end on the team. So to me, Kalen King. Is even though he's not coming out this year, um, he's another PSL guy, Kalen King, you know, sauce, you know, people that they, they, they putting the D back on the map. So, um, but what I see in Joey Porter Jr., to me, I wouldn't risk it myself. But what, but what do you guys think about taking a corner at six? So, in my opinion, it depends on whether somebody drops or not. If somebody in that top okay. five drops to six, you take one of those players. If they okay. don't and you don't get a trade back candidate, I don't have a problem with you taking a cornerback if you truly believe okay. it. That, that's, that, the that only, did, that's perfect. That, that's that, the only that, way that I. Right, that's the only way I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not tripping. Okay, tripping. okay, Bobby. Yeah, I, I'm a fan of him at this the second first round pick, but I don't know about the six because okay. I, I, I think I, I think I would like to see a little bit more with that defensive line. You okay. Know, help that okay. Up. okay. 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 So you're more but, so. But, it's coming. To, it's coming along. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We got the offense. We got the trenches on the offensive side of the ball tight. Mm-hmm. To go on and get okay. tight in the uh, defense. So, okay, okay, okay. So, okay, so, so the Miles Murphy pick would be leading up to where you got. So, now, or, or Ringo, if he, if you say he's gonna be around there, or Ringo, too. yeah. I mean, like I said, Ringo right now to me, like they don't have him up there just because of Georgia's defense. So, that's why I was like, okay, I'm just we just gonna watch. I'm gonna let people see the underwear Olympics and watch how the Kelly Ringo train goes back up now. To go to Reggie's point now, there's this dark horse. And it's going to lead me to pass this over to Elijah. Because if three quarterbacks go in this first five, there's going to be some question on which defensive guy is going to fall. Mm -hmm. So... Elijah, go ahead and give us your take on that dark horse, which would be Will Levis. Okay, so <laughs> so I, I have to quickly hop back to the defensive subject real quick. Um, go ahead. Number six, the cornerback situation. <laughs> um, I'm not taking a corner at number six. If you ever hear me say a cornerback in the top 10, you better check my temperature uh, because cornerback is one of the <laughs> hardest positions He's stupid, man. to adjust to in the NFL, which the reason Fact. why I say that, the reason why I say that is because you're, you're making a four year investment on these kids. Okay. And if you're already <laughs> wasting two of those years to let them adapt to the league, you're only getting two years back on your investment to make a decision on whether or not you should re-sign them. We're already going through that with Jeff Bakuda. So I would never want to do that with a cornerback. Pick them in okay. the second round, pick them in the third round, that sort of thing. That's where I think you should pick cornerbacks. Now, with that sixth pick, defensive lineman, defensive lineman, defensive lineman, because, yes, we have Houston. We like Houston. Here's the thing. The NFL is is the type of league where in the off season, and Nate's agreeing with me already. I already know where you're going. The type of league where they'll let you get you know get yours for that first year, but then they're going to figure out something to stop you in your second year. So now that everybody's seen what Houston can do, can Houston adjust to what they're going to do? Can Mm -hmm. Ace adjust to what they're going to do? 
So for me, I like Aleem McNeil. He's got to get himself a Robin to his Batman or a Batman to his Robin. I would get a defensive tackle in that top 10, get your get you the meanest guy you can, and let's get a defensive line that quarterbacks are afraid of so that it doesn't really matter, you know, how our coverage is on the back end because they don't got time to look. That's my okay. personal opinion. If you can't do that, get yourself an offensive lineman because you can never have too many great offensive linemen. So that's my take on pick number six. Now, so what, wait a minute. So hold on. So you're willing to take another offensive lineman yes. at six right now? Guard, he, a guard, a guard. I'm, well, I'm well, 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 now, now, keep in mind, there's the 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 top rated guard is slated to go around. 20. 14, 15, or 16. 20. 20. So 20. There. Right, right. That's right. So because because the 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 two offensive linemen are both tackles. Right. Yeah. So are saying, is 20. What I'm saying yeah. is, I'm not saying go pull a Gosder chairless. That's not what I'm saying. All right. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, oh, some people got that reference. There we go. Uh, oh. Well, what I'm saying is, <laughs> if there's somebody there that you really, really like on the offensive line and defensive line, that's turned into a shit show where everybody that you were going to get uh. going, and you, uh. you're in that war room, you got two minutes left on the clock. What are you going to do? Get yourself an offensive lineman because you can never have too many good offensive linemen. That's just my personal opinion on it. We finally have a great offensive line. Uh, which is fantastic, but we also had a lot of injuries on that line last year too. So for me, you can never get too many offensive linemen, but again, I would prefer a defensive lineman in that top 10 for Detroit. Oh, so defensive yeah, tackle or linebacker. Really trust trusted Holmes as far linebackers as ain't nothing. Uh, linebackers I ain't trust crazy. Holmes oh. with everything. That's why I'm saying if he oh. picked an offensive lineman that's not supposed to go to the second round, I'd still trust him on it. And if he picks a corner at six, you shouldn't have a problem with it either. See, that's the only thing, though. Like when it comes to corners, I'm a little hesitant because it has nothing. Not picking no tight end. It's got nothing to do with Holmes. It's got nothing to do with Brad Holmes in corner, and then I don't trust Brad Holmes. <laughs> no, I, okay, but hear me out. I'm not saying that I don't trust Holmes to figure out a good cornerback. What I'm saying is, traditionally in the NFL. That is the hardest position to make the adjustment from college to NFL. So why would you pick somebody True. unless they're going to be Deion Sanders or Sauce Gardner or Jalen Ramsey or Richard Sherman? I mean, Sherman didn't even go in the top ten. He was a uh, he I was think four, was four, four, six. But well, 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 Richard Sherman, Richard Sherman. Now keep in mind. So the last corners that have been drafted in the first round. Have went to the Pro Bowl within their first two years, right? Jalen Ramsey, right? No, not even just Jalen Ramsey. You're talking about Asante Samuel Jr. Mm -hmm. You're talking about J.C. Horn. You know, so there has been first round talent at the cornerback position that have been taken top ten and made a substantial. Right, you know, you know, progression. Now, so that's what I'm saying. Now, so I get what Reggie's. I get what you're saying. Yeah. I get what Reggie's saying too. Now, Reggie, like, listen, if you trust Holmes, now, then you gotta trust him. You gotta trust him 100. Right. You can't be like, ah, if you trust him, you trust him. Yeah, I, I, I understand where Reggie's coming from too. So, as far as Will Levis is concerned, to get on that part of it, um, yeah. Again, I'm going to throw out a caution flag to everybody watching this episode. You are going to be fed so much Will Levis over the next two months that by the time the draft comes around, you're going to be talking <laughs> about this guy like he is Dan Marino or Steve Young, okay? Because that's <laughs> what these scouts do, okay? It's not even really the scouts. It's the media. That's what the media does, mm -hmm. okay? They are the ones who, to, who will tell you that this is a once in a generation talent. And then next year, when you're still alive, they're going to tell you, look out, here's another once in a generation talent. Think about that. That'll make no damn sense. Okay. But again, <laughs> that's what they do every single year. So We've far, never seen so somebody far. this talented before. 
And then the next year, we've never seen anyone this talented before. Wait hey, a minute. Nate. What? Hey, Nate. Victor Wimbayama. <laughs> so I don't know who that is. But my point is, <laughs> with Will Levis, you are going to be inundated with you need to love this guy. He's a great quarterback. He's going to be fantastic in the league. And what they're saying about him is that his floor is Carson Wentz and his <laughs> ceiling is Josh Allen. Now, right. I'm, I'm not saying either one of those guys. To be honest with you, I can see some of the excuses that they're going to make, and some of them do have merit. Um, his offensive line sucked last year. They did not hold it down for the big fellas. They, it was not good. It was not good. In <laughs> they was not good like some peewees. Yeah, it was not good. Okay, if you remember that uh, Cam Newton commercial where all all his offensive line were peewee players, and he's out there running, that was basically what was happening. Um, he is a good quarterback. I think he had the potential to be one of the legendary quarterbacks at Kentucky, and they do have some who have played there. Um, but Ooh. it just didn't work out that way. It didn't work out that way. Uh, so for me, I think Will Levis is a good quarterback, but you're going to be sold that he is a great quarterback and that our team needs him. So look out for that. Okay, so here's, here's, here's my question for all three of you guys. Is he better than Hendon Hooker? Hell no. I'm sick of never heard with a hurt knee. Hooker with a hurt Hendon knee. Hooker, Superman. quarterback from Tennessee. The Tennessee yeah, you can't Oh, oh I forgot. I, I, I forgot. I forgot. Remember, I, I forgot about that Hooker conversation. I <laughs> forgot what Bobby just said. I ain't heard of him. My bad. <laughs> I ain't never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, listen. Okay. I, I, he ain't going to never not, I would not go for Will Levis because he. you're going to have to change the way that you do your offense if, if you get him. Okay, Reggie, is he better, in your opinion, than Hendon Hooker? On either one of them. No. Well, yeah. well, no, I don't know. <laughs> like, just, like I, I'm at this point out. Like <clears throat> we we're talking about QBs right now is annoying to me. <laughs> well, well, again, you know, that's what I said. You know, only because you know it might not be the ideal way that we're going to go, but yeah. because of the hoopla. And how everybody thinks that we need to take a quarterback right now because everybody else isn't sold on Jared Goff or they weren't happy with Jared Goff, whatever. And they're going to instantly say, hey, the Lions haven't had, you know, this time for them to truly get a replacement for Matthew Stafford, blah, 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 blah. So we're going to be fed this hoopla. So this is something, you know, that we had to truly address. This that sucks. It really does. It does. It, it does. But because it's one of the things where it could happen if the guy that Holmes want doesn't fall available. <laughs> so now he like, well, what's my secondary or my go to? Man, there's um, only one quarterback. I'm gonna go ahead and grab time. this QB. That's I'm gonna go ahead and grab this QB. And that's something like, does that even sound like something he really do with all the other issues we got? No, he would right. grab an offensive lineman. That's what he would do. He would grab an and offensive line. That's what because that's what smart GMs do. They actually right. grab the trenches. They grab right. a trench player. Like as nine times out of ten, if the guy I don't want or guy I want is not available, I grab somebody for the trenches. All right, there you know, it is. We need, okay. we need we need some more people on that line though. For sure. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So now Elijah. Okay. You can go ahead. We're gonna Reggie. pin Reggie's face. Look out. That sounded more violent so, than I intended it to. I'm going to pin his face, son. I'm going to pin his face. All right, here we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, <laughs> Reggie is the only person on the screen, folks. Look for this reaction. It's going to be a beautiful Okay, so, okay so our next segment is going to be led by, by the number one fan that you guys may know. My guy, Bobby Bless, we've been clamoring for this. We've been clamoring for it, and we finally about to make it happen. Let's get into today, it. Today we are having today we are finally gonna have 
the Jim Caldwell discussion. Oh, oh. look at that face. We about to have the Carwell discussion. Y'all better, y'all better get yourself. You, everyone go take a bathroom hey, break right hey, now. Hey, like hey, 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 look, now. look what T.O. say. You better get your popcorn ready. <laughs> oh man. Hey. Mm-mm. But Mm-mm. honestly, guys, we we we've been talking about this for quite a while. How we gonna get the um. Talk about how Jim Caldwell uh, was a guy that was on the right path. Some say that uh, we didn't get a uh, give the man a fair deal. Some say he was sabotaged. But I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen just to throw up a picture of Coach. It's somewhere on here. Hold on a second. Yeah, yeah, I, I knew Reggie was gonna. By Reggie not knowing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, okay, I'm about to share the screen. And here we go. I think I did it right. You did. Yeah. There okay, it man. is. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's the call. Hey, that's my guy, man. Uh, much respect for Caldwell. He one of the guys that got me re-interested in the Detroit Lions. Uh, don't get me wrong, I like Jim Swartz, but hey, I was kind of sick of the same old, you know, get going and mess it up. But make a long story short, I'm, I'm, a, he's in the headlines today because he came out and said that he won't even try to be an NFL head coach. Criminal, absolute yeah. criminal. Right. So, um, <laughs> man, it's met, man, I swear, I swear, Reggie, I feel the same way, but man. uh. It is so it is so crazy how this man got played. Um, I feel like even even though you know football is a business, you you can't get you can't get good things happen to you if you do good people like Caldwell was did. Um, people have various thoughts on his coaching style and not, but I just like how the players got down for him. He never went up to that. I never. I have not till this day. Heard Jim Caldwell ever throw any of his players under the bus? Uh, when it comes down to class, he, he he he. I mean, he might be in the dictionary for it. Um, we had several different situations. You know, you got he 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 go up there every day and he don't give them nothing. That's the main reason why I feel like he was disliked in this town because he he ain't talking about. Nothing y- y'all want to talk about type guy. He's not the guy that's going to g- get up there and tell you a, a witty joke or nothing, but he's the type of guy you're going to learn something when he's done talking. A lot of people don't got patience for that kind of thing. But I feel that with men that he is the highest winning percentage coach in Lions history, that he he doesn't get the fair shake on how he got ran out the door. But uh, I'm a I, me and Nate, we didn't fought this battle so long, man. And I could sit up here and talk about how much I love this coach, man, and how much is uh, uh, how much he affected just the way I look at football. Uh, but I, I'm gonna let you guys get in on this, and I'm gonna start with uh, Elijah because uh, I have never really truly heard his take, but I'm pretty sure, you know. You got something to say about it. What's yeah, up, brother? So I, I appreciate the opportunity to talk on it. Um, as far as Jim Caldwell is concerned, two things that I'm going to say. Um, one is retrospective and one is present, you know, present day. Okay. So I want to start off with retrospective. All right. I have always really, really appreciated those Jim Caldwell years. Because for me as a Lions fan, that was kind of the first time I really ever saw this team be successful. Um, Remember, I became a Lions fan back in 2007 when Calvin Johnson came to the team because I'm a Georgia Tech fan. So for me, yes, I saw Jim Schwartz kind of start getting us there. And then we kind of plateaued. And then Jim Caldwell comes in and it seems like we finally get a little bit of respect. Now, the things that I didn't like about Caldwell, 
are the things that I respect him for now. Yes. That's man. Yes, That's he big. Did. yes, he did not throw his players under the bus, but there are some times that I wish he would have. There, is, there are <laughs> many times where he did not scream at an official for a blatant misuse of the rule book to screw our team over. He didn't. He, he handled everything with grace. But at the time, I was pissed. I was like, come on, man. How can you not show any type of emotion whatsoever when we just got screwed? But you know what? He handled it with grace. So I respect him for it now because he, he had a very good way of handling conflict. And he also had a great way of treating his players. And there is not one single player that has coached for Jim Caldwell that I have seen come out and say anything negative about that man. Now, not a here's, one. Here, here's the deal, though. Okay. And this is where, you know, some people might get mad at me. When we're talking about Jim Caldwell now, we have to remember what the temperature was when he got let go. Mm -hmm. Because we were coming off of a couple of back to back nine win seasons. We were that team that had started gathering the interest of the entire nation because we were right there, but we couldn't get any further. And if you remember at the time, there was a lot of support for Bob Quinn doing what he did because people said, yeah, nine and seven isn't good enough. We believe that we can achieve greater. And unfortunately, we're never going to get there with Jim Caldwell. Now we all know how that worked out, but at the time, that decision was celebrated by almost every <laughs> single media network that was out there because we were getting we were getting Matt Patricia who had won multiple Super Bowls with uh, Bill Belichick and and people were talking about people were talking about how the Detroit Lions instead of going out there and hiring the first person they could in the process waited until after the Super Bowl to hire Patricia and that that was a different thing than we had done previously and that th we, we finally got it right and there was an energy okay when Matt Patricia first came in there was an energy that here we go we're gonna go win the freaking Super Bowl and like I said we all know what happened so there's a lot of Lions fans who were cheering when Jim Colbo got fired who will now go back and act like he was their favorite coach that we've ever had. Man, they better not. I but got you know, right. Right. Hey, look, we got but you know I'm right. Because there are people out <laughs> there who will me. say, he was the greatest coach we ever had. But if you go back and look at what they were saying back then, they were saying, get rid of him because we can do better than nine and seven. Uh, and he's what's mm -hmm. holding us back. And he was never what was holding us back. In my never. opinion, in my opinion what was holding us back was Offensive coordinator, because we could never get that right. For whatever reason, he had multiple offensive coordinators during his time as head coach, and we could never find that guy to be able to maximize what we had. And then obviously drafting. I mean, I, I want to say the drafting wasn't great, but at the same time, Bob Quinn is kind of the guy who built our offensive line that we love right now. So I'm kind of a little conflicted with that, but it wasn't. But see, it wasn't it, as great I as think his been. ability to get instant impact performers. No, no right. line is good, but he didn't get no Malcolm Rodriguez's. Right, he just kept bringing that, in. He, he, he just kept bringing Jared in Davis. Patriot players. Right. You know, but but no, and then he gonna believe Jared Davis the next down Ray Ray Lewis. Oh my God, he believed that right. shit. Oh my right. God. But again, for me with Jim Caldwell, a lot of the things that I took issue with. I now respect him for. Oh, and for I sure. do feel like he should have had another head coaching opportunity by now because he is one of the great ones, uh, in, in my personal opinion. I just don't think he ever got yeah. enough time and the full support of the organization to build the team he wanted to build. I think he That's was tough. hamstring from the beginning. This is your quarterback. And listen, I like Matthew Stafford, but this is your quarterback. This is the way that we're going to do it. Now, all we need you to do is just run practice and show up for the games and show up. That's the only time Stafford was efficient is with him, man. Right. That's but, the what only I'm time. Saying, but what I'm saying is they did not let Jim Caldwell do what he, what he needed to do, what he needed to do to build right. the team he wanted to build. 
So I know I'll it's taking right. a lot of time, but that's yeah, my right. assessment of it. So oh, that's right. good, Elijah. That's why I wanted you to go for it because I've never heard your take on there. Me and Nate, we man, me and Nate, we didn't fought man, it was, man, we didn't been called racist because we support Caldwell, all kind of stuff. But uh, big dog Reggie, I, you, you, hey man, you took your your, your shirt off in the club. Man. <laughs> look at it, look at not the shirt I'm off really in the ready, club. Bro. Yeah, he ready. I feel like I'm about to get roasted here by Reggie. Right, Reggie is muted. I, yeah, most likely. Right, Reggie at- is muted though. <laughs> See, this is one of the most. Yeah. Reggie be cracking me up. This is one of the most egregious firings I had seen in a long time. One of the most egregious. And the only two valid points that people can tend to bring up to me, they say, okay, uh, well, we weren't beating uh, teams that were over 500. That, that, that's one, one excuse that people bring up. And the other one is his end of the game clock management wasn't the greatest. Okay, so that's the two. That's a lie. That's, that's, that's a lie. That's the two biggest issues that people tend to bring up. What they never want to tend to bring up is how this man maximized with the least amount of talent in the league at that point. Agreed. This man was maximizing players that most likely wouldn't even been on another NFL roster. Mm-hmm. Nope. Exactly. Now, nope. I, looked, I, looked they it, I looked at it in the entire tenure that Jim Caldwell was here. The Lions were 32nd in the amount of pro bowlers that were actually on those teams. They were 32nd. And it's only 32 teams. <laughs> Mind you, but here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Two people that pe- that d- still had jobs after the fact, still had jobs after the fact, yep. had worse records than the Lions, but everybody want to sit up here and talk about how great they are. It was yeah. Harbaugh and it was Peyton. Mm-hmm. He had a better record than both of them. But all I hear is how great Harborough is in the in the Ravens, or how great the New or, uh, New Orleans uh, Saints are. But this man was sitting up here maximizing with the least amount of talent and had a better record than both of them. Mm-hmm. When, it, look at what he did with Flacco when they won the damn Super Bowl. Joe Flacco was a total bomb. Jim Caldwell took over their offense and got them boys a ring. And man. let's not even oh. speak on how many of the great quarterbacks sit up here and talk about how crucial Jim Caldwell was to their development. If you look at, it's an article, and I got it. It is, I got it too. About how Peyton Peyton Manning talked about is the reason why he became what he became. Mm -hmm. He didn't say say Dungy. He said it was Caldwell sitting with me for hours, breaking down tape, creating scenarios in order for me to become a better QB. You don't toss away a man like that. You don't right. toss away somebody that handled everything with class, always represented the organization right, and was actually winning when we were never we weren't winners. Right. And he's outperforming two people that still had jobs years later. Peyton was able to retire. And come back. And come back. <laughs> but this man can't get a job. Right. Mm. And anybody that sits up here and tries to make an argument talking about race, they can suck it. Right. <laughs> that's the only only real response I can say to that. If you really got a problem with that. The thing I have, that, the thing I the thing I didn't understand about the whole thing, just that I think what well, because everything was messed up, but the thing that like boiled my blood about the whole Caldwell firing was they gave this man an extension like three, four months earlier. And then what, I I don't understand how he, he can get fired three months later after getting an extension. Like how many times in history has that happened? You know, you, well, know what, you know what my biggest kicker was? At a time when the NFL has an issue with race. Oh, yeah. A major long time issue with race. You sit up here and have this revolving wheel of random dudes that never coached a team coming out of college and ain't had no success in the NFL. 
Oh, yeah, they can get a chance to get a job. Mm-hmm. They can get a mm-hmm. chance to get a job. Yep. But this man got to sit up here and fight and bend over and 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 all this other crap in order to try to get an assistant coach job for some other random dude. All right. We literally, we literally, we, we literally talked about that on, I think, the last episode, Reggie, because I have brought up how many interviews that Aaron Glenn's got. And I said, yeah. how many of those interviews? And listen, I understand I'm coming at this from a different perspective. I, I, I respect that. But no, yeah, no, no, no. I, you can. No, no, but Elijah, I love, I love to hear it from you, though, because it's like a like different how, perspective, but it's, you know what I mean? It's legit, though. But how many of those interviews are. You know th- these African American coaches who have the credentials. They they've got the credentials to have the damn job, and yet you're going to sit there and have an interview with them where you look at the clock for five minutes, ignore them the entire time, maybe get them a soda or something, and then say, "Oh well, that was your interview." Are you fucking kidding me? Really? Sorry. Yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, you don't know, you don't want to know what my last most egregious thing about that is. Yes, sir. I do want to know. Even even with everything that this man has faced since this has happened, which all of it is unfair in my eyes. Mm-hmm. He still has the attitude of, I want to be in the NFL. And he said, I want to continue to try to open up the door so other black men can become head coaches in the NFL. Mm-hmm. So despite you disrespecting the man and not even giving him a true opportunity to do what he loves to do and is really good at it, he still has enough class and grace to say, I'm going to still help you with your issue. Mm-hmm. And after he took the job, nobody wanted him. What was the name of that motherfucking coach? Winston Hunt or something? Yeah, Ken Winston. He, he said, no, he said, the quarterback too dumb. I won't fuck with him. Let me go to Tennessee. And then mm-hmm. Jim Caldwell said, I done broke down all the plays of Stafford. I think we can do something. And he's the only one that what he told. Look, I remember uh, Winston Hunt said, man, look, I don't even want Stafford in the meeting. Carl was like, bring Stafford to the meeting. He he, he was open enough to learn and all that stuff. See, Carwell wanted the job with the Lions when then nobody else wants the damn job. Kind of similar with uh, Campbell, too. But I'm just saying, like, it's like when the Lions was at the barrel, Carwell was there with solutions and then – we we failed that year with Swartz. Swartz, you know, undisciplined team. He took them same players. Eleven and five. Guys. Yeah, and a bad and, call away from winning the playoff game. And, so and, and that, the man is a teacher, and he gonna make a he gonna make a Thanksgiving dinner meal out of damn scraps, like Red like Reggie said also. So go see. I know you got something to say, Big Dog. Go ahead, Eliza. Um, and and the thing, the thing that you just referenced, you know, Jim Schwartz. Obviously, we're not trying to do an entire discussion on him, but you know, he I like Schwartz though. But he just, I, he I like him. I, I thought, I thought he was what we needed at the time. He was like, listen, we need attitude. We need to be a little undisciplined. We need to go out there and get ours and get some respect back. The problem was he didn't have what Jim Caldwell had. Because when Jim Schwartz faces confrontation, he goes head on into it and he doesn't have any strategy. He's just like, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. That, that's my strategy. Okay. I'm going to go in there. We're going to get bloody. Jim Schwartz wasn't fight it out. smart. And Jim Schwartz wasn't is, smart. And the thing is with Jim Caldwell, he's the type of guy who not only is he going to win the battle, he's going to win the war if you let him do his job. And that's the thing. You, were, you had asked about how is it that he could get the extension and then a few months later get fired. I'm going to tell you how that happens. That happens when you have an ownership who doesn't know jack shit about football. <laughs> because, because at that point in time, you know, and, and Martha Ford did, a, you know, a, a lot of good things for this organization in her. In her she wanted time. him to stay. She wanted him to stay. Right. But but what I'm saying is, is at the end of the day, she said, well, I hired you, Bob, to to make the decision. So go ahead. She put her trust in the wrong thing. That's how that happens. It was basically elder abuse, to be perfectly honest. Um, Hey, I used to say that too. Ask Nate. I said, man, that old lady, she think Barry Sanders still out there, man. And I'm I'm telling you what, 
if they would have kept Jim Caldwell, I believe Calvin Johnson would have still been playing. Not right now, but he would he you would have got a couple more years out of him. But he didn't want to be in another rebuild. Right. So for me, I think I think the biggest problem is they didn't let him do his job when he was there. And you know, as much as I like Stafford, maybe they should have let Stafford walk. No, it wasn't even really today. Stafford. Yeah. You know, can, I read, I, can I read y'all something from this article? Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm gonna tell you what the, the name of this article. Is that from today's article, brother? Or no, it's not from today. This is actually from a couple of years ago. Okay, we don't. Called measuring Jim Caldwell. What the Jets and NFL GMs can learn. I remember that one. Oh, yeah, I, I remember that. that. I've I shared, shared this that. article for years. That, that doesn't that. Tell, tell you how long I'm gonna sit up here talking about this Jim Caldwell issue. Oh, for sure. Now, there's one instance where they say the Lions' record was Stafford before Caldwell, 24 and 37. <laughs> Shit. The record Go with around. Caldwell and Stafford, 36 and 28. Now here, here it says, after years of continuous improvement under Caldwell, Quinn messed with a great thing. Stafford proposed his highest career passing rating, 99.3 in 2017. Now, this year, it regressed to 89.9, and the Lions' offense dropped from 7th to 25th. When I say Quinn is an arrogant idiot, I mean it. As a GM, he never took the time to objectively measure Caldwell's true value against the talent on the roster. Instead, yeah. he hired his unproven Patriots friend, Matt Patricia. He is the definition of what is wrong with the NFL. Mm -hmm. He's the very definition. Of, he's the representation of it in our organization. Mm -hmm. I have this proven man who is doing more with less. But I'm going to go ahead and hire my buddy the buddy system it's another yeah. system that, that that we tend to call it but i'm not i'm gonna keep it pg for well, right now <laughs> it's it's one I of think, the things i think i've cussed the most on today's show so i mean yeah yeah, yeah yeah well you know what i call it i call it the buddy hustle and it's something that me and my homeboys came up with when a guy isn't doesn't have the accolades, hasn't been proven, but knows everybody and is in everybody's picture and everybody's post. Every <laughs> time you turn around, everybody knows him, but he doesn't have the accomplishments of the guys that know him. Mm -hmm. He's just affiliated with them. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about Jim Caldwell a lot of you know he did he came off good season the first thing this the first the very first interview Bob Quinn had with the Lions he talked about replacing Jim Caldwell mm -hmm. They still hired you, but you were already talking about Matt Patricia two years before you even hired him. You were talking about Matt Patricia, and you have a winning coach. Right. Hey, hey, two Nate. years now. Hey, Nate. Keep in mind, two whole years. How can you talk about a guy who ain't doing shit, who hasn't won anything as a head coach? You're all defense blew, about blew the Super Bowl. Defense and then this defense blow. I ain't even got to the defense them. part. Right. I ain't even hey, got to the hey, defense hey, part. Hey, hey, quick question. You, quick question. Quick question. Mm -hmm. Do you know how the media portrayed Jim Caldwell? How they oh, do. I do. They pro trade and B trade. Mm -hmm. Everybody thought this is the collective uh, thought of what his record would be when he got here. U.S. Today, 23 and 41. CBS Sports, 29 and 35. Only ESPN actually had a with a 500 record, 32 and 32. Mm -hmm. His record actually ended up being 36 and 28. But here's the kicker. 
in 2016, the man lost his two best players. Calvin Johnson was not on his team no more. The Dominican Sioux was not on his team no more. Yep. The man still went nine and seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> With the two with biggest catalysts with your offense and your defense gone. The man still had a nine and second seven record. And you know what it led to? After finger was broke, all kind of shit was going on. That year, nine and man. seven ain't good enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it, it's I gotta say the Caldwell thing. It, you, anybody just to, you you have just no look, context. You have no you have zero context. If you say that nine and seven is not good enough, and then realize what was happening on that team, right? Yeah. So, so what I what what I did was I made a little chart. So I took points from everything from each one of you guys, right? Uh -huh. I need and a then drink. I, need I a had drink. a. I need a drink. You got a drink? <laughs> <laughs> I got what to say. You got my blood. Y'all got my blood pressure all up. <laughs> I know. I hear. Hey, so we've been trying okay, to talk so, about this for a week. So, Ever, so, so let's start with, uh, so we can talk about how, okay, one of the things Elijah said was this is how, like how they said people, one of the problems people had, they said that he didn't show enough emotion, correct? Right. One of the things when they talked about officials making bad calls, officials not giving us respect, one of the things I talked about this year of how do you get the recognition of the officials is to win regardless right. of, of what the call the re of what and the officials let everybody call. else speak to when them. you win regardless of the officials trying to take it from you you gain the respect that's the approach that Caldwell was teaching his guys listen right. We can argue all day long, but guess what? It's not going to change the official's mind when the call is made unless it's to screw us. And you can't reverse it. You can't reverse it. So that yeah, was, so this yeah, is why. They used to, they used to, you used to be heavy on that. You used to tell them in but, but because it, 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 it's, Right, because no matter what you argue, it's not going to change it. The only thing you could do, truthfully, is get your team back fixated on what they're going on the, on the prize. On the prize. So, so here's yeah. the thing. So then they say, well, he didn't beat 500 teams, right? Mm -hmm. But what is Matthew Stafford's nickname? Captain the, Mediocre. The comeback kid. Captain comeback. All this. Guess what? That wasn't happening until Jim Caldwell taught right. him how to play calm, how to not turn the ball over in crucial situations, to turn down that gunslinger mentality. Exactly how they taught the freaking golden boy, Peyton Manning. But right. So again, the same so, issue. Right. So so then you go to, we could say, hey, you know, we could talk about the 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 change we talk about how a lot of people didn't like Schwartz being fired. So Caldwell was never truly given a chance anyway. Right. But what I wanted people to understand when I talked about Jim Schwartz, Jim Schwartz had energy. He did. He, uh -huh. he seen smoke. He stood in front of it. Fuck a fire extinguisher. I'm just in the middle of it. Right. Gag me. I don't care. But he wasn't smart. Right. He didn't know the rules. I seen this guy challenge a play that was going to be reviewed anyway. And because yeah, he on Thanksgiving, play, on Thanksgiving, he didn't have a challenge later on. Guess what? He challenged no, the play, mm, and then I, because he challenged it, which was against the rules, the play stood. Right. Yeah, because right. they can't review it. Yeah, I remember that on Thanksgiving. But, uh, right. So, so again, so Jim. You know, you needed a transition. So a lot of people, uh, you know, were upset with that because they thought Schwartz had the right energy. You go from an energy guy to a guy 
But he high five right dudes now. that get penalties, though. He was high fiving cats that was getting penalties. Man. Well, well, right. See, but you know what? But I did not like him like that. Everything has a place and a time and an order. Mm-hmm. This is what you needed. You needed that from Schwartz because we this team didn't have an image. This team right. was a pushover. Guess what? This team go 0-16, but you knew one goddamn thing. If you don't protect my quarterback, they going to kill him. Uh-huh. <laughs> the image was, listen, you don't know which Lions team you're going to get. A Lions team that's going to be undisciplined. You're going to get a Lions team that's not going to win, but you're going to get a Lions team that's going to fight they and they're going to hurt you. Right. So the identity that Schwartz came with helped. So when Tara Austin got there, now you can put these guys around in Dominican Sioux. You can put the uh, 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 Willie Youngs, uh, 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 Ziggy Ansas, Cliff Averills, you George know, Johnson, you know, really you know, you know Mosley, Mosley, and 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 and, and Jones, James Jones, where we had a top defense because you had that identity. Mm-hmm. Now you went from an undisciplined team to a disciplined team who had the energy and the guys that's going to teach you how to play here. Yeah, you had lapses, but not that many. So now the identity is still there. Dog, this defense is going to hurt you, but they plan in between the whistles now. Right. Caldwell kept you focused. Now, you talk about the Bob Quinn thing coming in with his contract. You talking about Matt Patricia. Jim Caldwell still winning. You're talking about a guy two years before you could hire, before you even hired him. Uh-huh. But you're talking about a guy who had the worst defense in the NFL. Here's the kicker. This is what I mean about people and fickle numbers. The Patriots had the number one scoring defense. Agreed. But they were 32nd against the pass. They were 30 break. seconds in and yards don't allowed. And don't break. They were 30 seconds in pass completions. So you're taking a guy who, yeah, this guy's not putting his players in position to win. It's just the point that when you get close to the end zone, guess what? It's a smaller area to defend, and your great players can do what they do because you're not using this bend. Ben, don't break. Yeah, because they ain't got to worry about getting beat over the top no more. That's why. Exactly. And but now it's not just that. Everything that you catch in front of me, I don't, I don't have as much room to cover. Mm-hmm. Right. So you intentionally sabotage Jim Caldwell with the draft picks. Oh my God. I forgot and, about that shit. And the contracts. And I, I didn't we gonna get to the contract part. Yeah. Now your draft picks. Uh, my numbers guy, Reggie. Can you do me a favor? Can you pull up the running backs that were drafted the same year with Alvin Kamara, please? That that was uh 2018, I think. Eight, on yeah, our roster, at on, on our roster at that time, our running backs were Dwayne Washington. Zach Zinner, Justin Forsett. We had Theo, uh, Theo too. Uh, Mike, Mike James. We had Amir Abdullah, Mister Fumble himself. Theo Riddick. You had Theo Riddick. I love Theo. And you come out. Yeah, he was a beast. And you come out and say not one running back in that draft was better than what you had. So, Reg, you got that up? Yeah, well, I was like, I got you. I think McCaffrey was the first running back took that year. Yep. But it's not even just that. It's the running backs from the second round for me. Second on down. I don't even count the first. That's the year he, he picked T's that year. Yeah, yeah. Because right. of who he Running backs were drafted in that draft? Yes. Go yeah. ahead, run it down for me one time. Oh, no, man. This, man, this is crazy. 
It's crazy. Like, like you know, Cook. Joe Mixon. Alvin Kamara. Yep. McCaffrey was first over. Green, I mean, first first. Oh my God. Dante Foreman. Oh, my God. <laughs> James Conner. Samaji P. Ryan, even he would have helped. <laughs> this is crazy. Okay, well, well, you know, that, that was just a quick summary because Bob Quinn told everybody that he did not draft a running back because none of the running backs coming out were better, were, weren't any better than they what were we all had better. They were on all our better. roster. Where the two guys you had battling for your starting running back were Dwayne Washington and the happy fit penguin himself, Zach Zinner. Hmm? Still got were hurt. battling for the starting running back position. So, you don't draft a running back. Everybody, we've been you, you, you total, you completely misdrafted and misled the entire franchise. So now, let's go into the Monday Night Football game against the Giants. Calvin Johnson's having a great game. The Lions are destroying the Giants, forty-one to ten. Yeah, First game of the year, open the night, and. The, and, and the resident madman, resident madman says, I don't know why the Lions haven't signed. Why doesn't Jim Caldwell have a contract? This is John Gruden. He said, I don't understand why this guy doesn't have a contract. And he puts the Lions record up on national TV on Monday Night Football, and they're beating the hell out of the Giants who were projected to go to the playoffs that year. They were up mm. by 30. I mean, whooping they ass. <laughs> the very next day <laughs> after that, here comes breaking news. The Lions signed Jim Caldwell to a three-year contract, blah, 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 blah. But here was the kicker. That fine language. His contract was never fully guaranteed. That's crazy. Every yeah, other that, coaching contract that is same year, I got more, that same I got more year, Super Bowls than a whole dang going organization, and I can't get the guaranteed contract. The same year, <laughs> guess what? You hire Matt Patricia, but this is how much the people didn't know. The reason why they didn't hire to after the Super Bowl is because they could not have communication with Matt Patricia because the Patriots were still active. It had nothing to do with them extending the search. He knew who he wanted in the first place. He talked about it two years before he even, even fired though I got a black, with. Even though I got a black coach, I still got to interview another black coach. This is so crazy. Steve Wilkes at that time said he declined an interview oh, yeah, he already with knew. the Lions because he I said, about that too. why am I going to go and do an interview when I already know who they want to hire? Right. Yep. I do remember that. And, and just, so, just to, sorry, go ahead, Nate. Go, go ahead. So I'm just saying, so just to that, it just Thank shows just the respect. mindset and the sabotage that Bob Quinn had ahead of time. He went Man, we need in to call with well this. Show. We need he went show. in making sure you can't tell me, if, I hate to say it, it was a Kwame Brown effect. He went into this like my homeboy about to eat. My home, I'm going to find a way to get my homeboy. My homeboy is about to eat. It ain't been two years. You you ain't been in the GM, the head GM, in a week. And the first thing you do is talking about a guy you can hire for two years. So you intentionally do not do anything to give him better players for him to succeed. But guess what? He still played above Average. He's not the Ernie Corsay. Listen to Ernie, Ernie They listen to his dumb ass. That's what well, happened. Well, 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 Ernie Acorsi, only thing on the Ernie Acorsi, only Ernie Acorsi, that's that good, that good old boy thing. He was a consultant because 
Martha didn't have the ties to the NFL. She, you know, Arnie was cool with her husband. So she needed somebody that she felt she could trust. True to the detriment, Bob Quinn was considered a draft scouting guru. So at the time, the guy you Man, Belichick was doing all that. Bel I know Belichick what? was doing all that. He was even time, letting the air off the footballs. Man, I'm hey, hear that. Man. But at the time, the hire from a scouting aspect was good. Now he hired Rod Wood, Rod Wood who didn't know shit about <laughs> football. But at, at the same time, the one thing Bob Quinn did do, and it's not even the offensive line, he scrapped that whole scouting department, which now it's still from that staff, you still have guys that are under Brad Holmes that are helping this team continue to get better. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me that these guys had the same, the longest tenured scouting department in, in the NFL of 27 years. You got the same guys that's, that's picking Jordan Dyson and Michael Lashure and Titus Young and, and all these, all these guys that <laughs> never amounted to nothing. Never amounted to nothing. He's had a bat too. I remember he had the damn bat, Quinn. I but that was my Jim Caldwell rap, man. I'm gonna go ahead and turn yeah. it over to Elijah. Y'all, we've been we've been pushing this show. We've been pushing yeah, it. Yeah, we don't need a Jim Caldwell show, we, man. It's so hey, much. I know. Better. But what we, we do want to do nowhere near. Right. We didn't, but one of the things I think is really important, y'all, that we really do get into, which is we continue to talk about the history of our team because you never know where you're going until you know where you came from. So Elijah, go ahead, dog. Take over that quick take over for me, brother. Okay. So I'm gonna take us back to 1952. Okay. And we don't even have to get to 88 miles per hour in order to do it. So just give me a second here. Uh, <laughs> well, 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 I get this all set up. Okay. So, I appreciate that, Nate. Thank you for the drum set. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get this all set up here. As you know, we have been uh, looking at the history of the Lions uh, over the years. I got this muted here because YouTube doesn't like me. Okay. That's just, that's just, <laughs> thing I can say it, fellas. Um, but we're going to hide those meeting controls. I'm going to play some footage for you, and I'm going to read uh, what was going on back in 1952 to kind of set the stage here. So here's what was going on as I go ahead and uh, read this here for you. So in 1952, it was the Detroit Lions taking on the Cleveland Browns for the NFL championship game. So here is your game summary. All right. Detroit took the opening kickoff, failed to gain, and punted with Renfro getting back 11 yards to the Browns' 41. A couple of offside penalties were costly, but the Browns still managed to reach the 18 as Graham then tossed the for an 11-yard loss, uh, and the threat ended with Lou Groza. Yeah, that's right, that Lou Groza missing a field goal from the 25. Detroit then moved upfield getting to the Cleveland 30, but also failed to score when Pat Harder was short and wide with a field goal bid from 37 yards out. Punter Horace Gillum punted a short kick, which rolled out at midfield with the Lions going 50 yards in seven plays. Lane, that's right, Bobby Lane, started it with a pass to Cloyce Box for 10 yards to the 40 and then ran for 13 and another first down on the 27. Lane added nine more before Walker made a first down on the 16 from where Lane passed to Bill Sawaki, I believe is how you say it, for 14 yards <laughs> to the three. After an offsides penalty, Lane would run the ball in for a touchdown and the Lions would lead at halftime seven to nothing. The second half started with the Browns moving steadily until checked by David's interception. Detroit was halted on this chance with the ball, but clicked the next time when Walker broke away for the touchdown that boosted the lead to 14 points. 
A Cleveland third quarter touchdown narrowed the lead to seven, but a defensive stand from the Lions from their own five, along with a late Pat Harder field goal, sealed the victory and the Lions' first championship since 1935. The final mm. score in this game, your Detroit Lions 17, those Cleveland Browns 7. Lions obviously were the uh, champions of the national uh, well, I, I guess technically it would be the uh, National uh, Football Championship League, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, national Conference champions. There we go. Uh, and Cleveland was the champions of the American Conference. Obviously, it's not considered a Super Bowl, um, but I always, you know, I always have to tell people when they're giving the Lions crap for not winning a Super Bowl, I always That's tell them. we won a world championship. We won world championships. And those, <laughs> and those do count. Because you can't sit there and say that ours don't count and then celebrate Otto Graham from the Cleveland Browns as one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Because uh, if he was, you know, that great, then those games must have mattered, right? Uh, so yeah. anyway, uh, Detroit, obviously, like I said, ended up winning that. That was their second title, by the way, because we talked about the 1935 title. This one was in 1952, and it was the first of three straight championship games where the Detroit Lions played against the Cleveland Browns, which I think is kind of kind of cool. Um, quarterback in this game, obviously, for Detroit was Bobby Lane. Running back was Doak Walker. And head coach, Buddy Parker. That was the situation for the Lions. Uh, for the Browns, they were led by head coach Paul Brown. Quarterback, Otto Graham. And uh, as we mentioned, you know, they also had uh, Lou Groza as a kicker. And, you know, it, it's interesting to me because there are so many, like when you go back and you watch these games, you end up seeing these players that awards are named after. And it's kind of cool to see yeah. that they earn that respect um, from all of their peers to be having name, you know, awards named after them. Uh, so I would encourage folks, listen, I know that, you know, the, the footage is blurry and I know that the halftime shows were not that great. Um but I would encourage you to go back and watch these games. They have they have actually edited these as like 20 minute highlight films on YouTube. And it was actually sponsored by Miller uh, Beer. And they have a guy who actually announces the entire game for you. Uh, it's really vintage, really retro, but it's a good way to spend 20 minutes. And hey, at the end of it, you already know the Lions are going to win. So why would you not want to spend a Saturday watching a 20-minute video and feeling pretty good about yourself and your favorite team? So that's what I got for you. That's 1952 in a nutshell. Next week, or next episode, I should say, uh, we will cover that 1953 championship game uh, against the Cleveland Browns. So that's what I got for you guys for today for our history Love lesson. Love it. And I'm just curious, guys, what do you think about that? I mean, I, 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 like I say, I, I'm, I'm a history buff. I love it. You know, like I say, uh, it, it gives people an idea. A lot of people don't even know who these awards are named after, let alone that they are former Lions players. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, like you don't know where you, you don't know where you're, where you're going to, you know, where you're being. Like, the Dope Walker, you know, everybody knows the award, Dope Walker, you know, the best college running back that's what you get right but how many people actually knew that he was a former lions great running back right so it, you know that's something that to me i think you know it, it's when you came up with the idea why well, i loved it you know it, it gives people an idea like man i have y'all don't truly know the amount of throwback great players this team really really had mm -hmm. and you know and, and and the legacy behind these awards, and hell, like like me and Bobby told the one guy, them people didn't even know that the Lions was truly a team from Ohio, right? So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so so that's big. I love it, Elijah. Man, great idea. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking <laughs> hey. forward to the next episode. Bobby, you got something? Yeah, I just wanted to like, I you know, like behind me, I got a. a a flag with all the championship teams. So I was, I was, you know, I was just interested in uh, who was the damn guys besides Bobby Lane. That's the only one I really know for sure. Mm -hmm. So it, it was, it's, it's pleasant to hear about 
other like it's a reason why people love football in Detroit. And to be honest with you, it's got to be is what these guys did in that decade is the reason why we probably mm-hmm. still got football in Detroit. Yeah, I mean, it was it was it was the thing to do, um, you know, every weekend, you know, when they had a game, that's where your family was. Uh, if you were fortunate enough to be able to go and if you weren't fortunate enough to be able to go, you listen on the radio. Um, you know, so so that's why, you know, obviously my profession that I do every single day, uh, obviously, I love radio broadcasts. And if it was up to me, I would say you don't need a Joe Buck. You don't need a Troy Aikman. Find, you know, if Kansas City's hosting the game. Let their radio crew be the Monday Night Football voice. If we're hosting the game, let our crew do it. Because these radio guys, man, they 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 work their ass off. And they do a great broadcast. And they have so much emotion whenever their team does something right or when their team does something that's boneheaded. But that's a conversation for another time. <laughs> but like I said, I always <laughs> love those radio announcers uh, for what they do. Um, and I think Detroit's got some of the best in the league. Um, let's go on here to... Inside the dam, we're gonna have to be a little quick on this one, Nate. But uh, inside the dam, we want to give some love to our. I started right? eating. <laughs> <laughs> so look, look, we can really do. What we can we, we can do? Let's remove inside the dam and that's okay. Because I just started eating. <laughs> right, I think I understand what you're saying. Okay, yeah, we don't want Nate to choke. Um, okay, so let's move on to Valentine's Day. Now we know it already happened. So anybody who just got a quick panic attack saying, oh, no, I forgot to get my wife a gift. Listen, you already fucked up. But anyway. I'm about to say, damn, I got to get another one? Shit, damn. Let's let's go over here to Bobby Bless, because Bobby got a great Valentine's Day gift, and he wants to show it off. Bobby, you were the only one. My my, my wife, once again, she comes through. I'm an easy person to buy gifts for. Detroit Lions hat. I love them. Um, to be honest with you, man, this is this is a unique hat to me. It's like a, a khaki brown trimmed in pink, and then it got this nice little like you know rag pattern, but it's pink to go with this hat. It's brown on the tip. And once again, like I've been buying all years with these other hats, is the um that emblem from the 75th year on the Lions. I remember Ironically, that's the year they lost every game, so I'm, I guess I'm commemorating that. But whatever. <laughs> this is the, hey, ain't that the year we lost them all? Right? I guess yeah. we're celebrating that. So. Yeah. That was that was the I, year where you ended up with a with a profit as far as your wallet was concerned. Man, look, dude. No, actually, man, that was messed up for me that year. Even just to even bring that up real quick, because uh, unfortunately, when the Lions don't. When they black out the games here in Toledo. So the only way I could listen, I mean, get the games was sit in my car with it running and listen to Detroit Lions radio. Hey, radio. Yeah, and they would get their ass whooped. So I'd be sitting in that car. I was mad and crying in the car. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's another story. But once again, my <laughs> wife, she just, one thing for her being a damn Packer fan, she do come up with some nice looking Detroit hats. Some I never seen before. So once again, shout out to my baby for getting me together. But that's okay, it for really Packer Girl. girl. Uh, they, they said okay, Packer Girl. <laughs> she, ain't got, uh, she ain't saying nothing. So <laughs> I guess this is hey, good. Hey, listen, I, I, I wouldn't either the way what the way they took them lumps this year. They <laughs> didn't get to get to yeah. the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Nate, Nate just went sorry, Bobby. I'm sorry, I, I don't want you to sleep on the couch tonight. Sorry, Nate, hey, Nate, all just went, better too. Nate just went reverse sour patch kid because he was sweet and then he went sour real quick. Anyway, hey, uh, hey, <laughs> hey, 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 pulled the carpet right from under it. But gotcha, hit him with that up. light of a queen. Ka-chow! Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I think like, like we were talking about in our meeting, Elijah, I think it's probably time for me to uh. Get back on the internet search and maybe since my birthday coming up, let's see what birthday gift I'm gonna get me. So there you go. Maybe that'd be good. So as far that's as, it for much later, brother. Okay. So as far as the rest of the show's concerned, I, I I normally we would talk about this in the chat or in a meeting, but I'm just gonna ask the guys real quick. Um, we have a lot of free agents to go over. Um, do we wanna save that for another episode or how do y'all wanna do that? 
because we're getting close. Well, if we save for another episode, it'd be good because you know it's almost getting around that time where it's going to be top topic. Okay, so. all right. So, so we will save that for another time. What I do want to get into though, before we go to closing remarks, is the XFL. That's right. So they debuted this weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, they had a pretty good weekend, as far as I could tell, as far as uh, fan participation was concerned. Obviously, that's a big deal. Um, they got some pretty good coaches in that league. And overall, they had some pretty good games. Uh, as far as my personal opinion is concerned, I think it will be interesting to see how the teams that lost draw fans moving forward. Because oh. if this league is mm-hmm. going to be successful, they're going to need everybody to show up for these games. Um, San Antonio had a great attendance. Arlington didn't really have great attendance, despite the fact that it's Bob Stoops coaching and everything else. Um, Mm -hmm. DC had good attendance. Uh, Houston had good attendance from what I saw. That's a game I watched, brother. That was a good game, too. Now, obviously, I was was telling these guys to watch XFL football. Looks like they did it. So, Bobby, what was your opinion of XFL ball? Oh, it, it was good, but just to be full disclosure, my mom and my dad, they were already excited about it, man. They watched it last year. They watched, they watched USF. They just, just football, football. But, uh, you know, I wanted to give it a chance just because I like to rock. That's my dude, man. So yeah. I, if he got anything involved in it, I, 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 I'll give it a chance just because of him. But I, I like the different rules, even from different from college. I like the different rules. They're just doing stuff to make it stand out better. I like the I like the two point conversion from the I can't remember. I and the three point conversion from the ten or something like yeah. that. I like that. Yep. That was sweet. From the, from the two yard line, it's a one point conversion. Five yard line, it's a two point conversion. Ten yard line, it's a uh, three, three point. Conversion. Yeah, that yeah. that's sweet. And, and and to be right. honest, one more thing that caught my eye. No, it's actually two more things that caught my eye. That kickoff return was different, and it was it's cool. You know what I mean? I thought I liked the mm-hmm. kickoff return because they can't move until they a little bit closer to each other, but they can't move until the guy catch the ball. So it's a lot of one cut and go situations, and that make it kind of interesting for uh for that too. And the last thing is they can challenge anything penalty. Whatever, foot in the bound. Hey, you yeah. said that was passing the fairs. Hell no, I'm going to throw the flag. No. <laughs> That's my life. For real. And and on top of that, I like how when the guy was in there uh, deciding on the replay, you and you in there, there with him. You know what I mean? They showing you what he's trying to process, what, what things he is doing to get to his answer or what he was looking for. I love that part. They, it seemed like they more uh, – Fan, fan active. They they interviewing guys right after they get the touchdown, and it was all good, man. And 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 you know what? It was some athletes out there. It wasn't no guys that work with me at Walmart on, on on Tuesday, on Saturday playing football. So it was cool. So cool, cool, cool. one thing I want to build off of that Bobby just said, you know, with the review process, that was one of my biggest pet peeves. It's actually been one of my biggest pet peeves as long as I've been a football fan is that you have, you know, these Fox announcers uh, insert, you know, broadcaster, you get my point. They always have, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. they always have the expert of officiating. Who had nothing to do with Dean Blandino. <laughs> right. Dean Blandino, Mike Cabrera. They, they, they always have them on standby. They call them in and say, what do you think happened on that play? And then right. they'll say something to the extent of your refs are ass and titties. And then we get nothing <laughs> out of it. Okay. We get nothing out of it. Other, oh, than, that knowing, other right. than knowing that the guy who is the expert doesn't agree with the people on the field. And then we all have to say. All thing it does is make it matter. That's right. it. Exactly. That's it it, it antagonizes the audience. So what I loved about this was in the XFL, they get that one challenge, and they can challenge whatever the hell they want to challenge. And the beauty of that. it is that they actually have somebody dedicated to make sure they get the shit right. And you know who probably appreciates that the most, even though like all these old school football fans will be like, ah, you know, the ref, why even have the refs if you're just going to overrule them? You know who appreciates somebody getting their back for once? The officials. 
Because whenever Dean Blandino or Mike Cabrera or whoever says that they don't agree with the guys on the field, but they don't have the power to help the guys in the field, you know who gets bitched at? The guys on the field, okay? So for one, <laughs> they can be like, look, we got it wrong. Thank you, eye in the sky, for taking care of us. So I think the XFL, you know, obviously they, they have an agreement with the NFL where they're trying out different rules that we may end up seeing in the NFL at some point. I liked it. I liked it. I, liked I wouldn't it. I be shocked it. if you end up seeing uh, the, especially the the onside kick, the way they do it in the XFL, because the way they do it is you try a fourth and 15 from your own 25 yard line. And if you get it, you get to keep possession of the ball. If you don't get it, obviously the other team takes over at your 25. It wouldn't shock me if you see that. In the That's NFL. sweet. That's sweet. That is sweet. And the that same with Battle Hawks actually came back and won their game. And how they did it was a three point conversion and a, uh, a, a good fourth and 15 and then a touchdown. That's how they ended up winning their game, uh, which is crazy to think about. But I'm just curious, Reggie, I don't know if you watch XFL at all. Did you this weekend or no? I could have just do any of that this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually at the uh, the event on Sunday. Okay. For the for the uh, PSL championships, I will say that my nephew won a championship, very city cool. championship on Sunday. I'm very proud of him. Uh, now they working on their way for uh, going for states. But yeah, I was mad busy. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, you disappeared on us, but I'm wondering if. Uh... If you yes, I did, yourself. and and guess what? But uh, let me sit back down for a second. <laughs> this is crazy, man. It, it it goes back to what Bobby was talking about about the, it actually being athletes in this, because if people wonder about former players like Josh Gordon, Gordon really yeah, showed Josh Gordon is playing why the NFL is still so much higher. In level, regardless of his age, why his level of play is still here and these other guys are still down here. Well, I mean, yeah, he, he's definitely the best player in the whole league. Easily. So far. <laughs> easily. <laughs> so I did see it. I liked it. Um, and I'm going to look at it some more. So yeah, it was it's definitely schedule. worth me watching next week, that's for sure. Here's the upcoming schedule for the XFL here, and then I got one other thing to talk about, and we'll do closing remarks. Uh, so for the XFL this weekend, if you want to check them out on Thursday night, they got a Thursday night football game. It's going to be the St. Louis Battle Hawks taking on the Seattle Sea Dragons in Seattle. Uh, that game is going to be on FX. So make sure you tune in for that one. You can also check out all these games on ESPN Plus as well. Uh, then on Saturday at 7, we have got the DC Defenders taking on Rod Woodson's Vegas Vipers. That'll be a seven o'clock kickoff. That game. Oh, will be, I, I might want to watch that one. That game will be on FX on Saturday night. Then on Sunday, more football. That's right. On Sunday at four o'clock, it'll be the San Antonio Brahmas. They are coached by Heinz Ward, taking on the Orlando Guardians, who got take you know took out behind the bar and beat. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what, what type of resolve they've got. Uh, that game will be in Orlando. That game will be on ESPN. And then to wrap up this weekend for the XFL, on uh, Sunday at 7 o'clock, it'll be the Arlington Renegades taking on their crosstown rivals, the Houston Roughnecks. Uh, that game will be on ESPN and ESPN2. And that's one of the things that I love about this league is that, well, they're on major channels. So it's not like you got to go and download, you know, Telemundo to watch the game, okay? Or ESPN, the Ocho. You don't have to do that, okay? You can actually find them on oh. real channels so uh last thing i wanted to mention because i do think it'll impact the lions a little bit players from the xfl could be on the lions by the time our next season comes around so it is worth watching because there are some guys there that could end up being on our team also the usfl they start up in april this is going to be year two for them uh they did a college player draft today oh. And they drafted 80 kids uh, who, as far as I know, uh, would have been probably seventh round, sixth round, fifth round picks. So that's kind of interesting because 
The Are NFL, they still eligible for the NFL draft? They still eligible for the NFL draft? It's ticky tacky because if they take the contract with the USFL, they're not. So they got oh. drafted today, and those kids are going to have to make a decision now of do I oh. trust that I'm going to be picked by an NFL team oh. or do I want to go ahead and go to the USFL, play this season, get more game film to show those NFL coaches. So oh. it, it's interesting because the XFL didn't do that. They didn't do a college player draft. The USFL did that, and if you remember – Back in the 80s when they had the USFL, they did that shit too. And they drafted uh, they drafted Herschel Walker. Uh, they drafted some of the bigger name players. Now, they didn't do that today. But maybe in the future, they might try that shit. And if their contracts are better than the NFL for these rookies, it could be ticky-tacky and interesting there. But again, for those kids that were drafted today, they got to make a hell of a decision. Do you take the automatic job, the guaranteed oh, job to go play, or do you wait and hope you get picked by an NFL team? It'll be interesting to see. So with that, let's go to closing remarks here. I'm going to start off with Reggie. Reggie, your closing remarks, my friend. You got something bad to say about Jim Caldwell? I advise you to keep his name out your mouth. <laughs> don't play no shit. Stupid. You stupid, Reggie. If they're gonna play, they come. Dumb, dumb, right? <laughs> yeah, right. We ain't taking no. We ain't taking no call with us. Please, they right. play. I got. I got Damn time right. today. I got <laughs> time today. Bobby, bless your final comments, my friend. Oh man, we just a much better team with us, folks. Man, I'm just glad we got us show again with all my boys, man. We oh. we. Without, without without all four, it ain't the same, man. So I'm just glad we back on the same page. At least one more time. All right. Nate Rucker, my friend. I know you were trying to eat dinner right now. So, Nate, <laughs> final comment, my friend. Well, it was a mix of that and then Luna's trying to learn how to come downstairs. So uh, I don't cute. know if y'all heard her barking. She was having a full-blown conversation with me about coming down the stairs. <laughs> I, advise, I, advise, I advise you to pick me up and put me aside. <laughs> no, 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 no. Luna, Luna doesn't function like that. She really wants you to want me to sit there and watch her while she tries to come down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but, literally. but uh, man, a lot of what I, I my main thing make sure we get these timestamps on here tonight because I want people to really think make sure we get these timestamps on here tonight because I want people to really go back and pay attention about the passion that uh, we as fans have about the way Jim Caldwell was done. And not just as a coach, but as a man. Mm -hmm. yeah, the, each of the players. And then, yeah. and on top of that, as a, a, a successful <laughs> black man, and it also shows in, uh, the way that these coaches are being done. If people don't remember, you can think about Brian, Brian Flores told them they was giving him a hundred K for a loss. Just the like, move. Just the move. You know, you know, you know, Eric B enemy. Like, how can this guy be one of the top offensive coordinators, but still well, he gotta to make a lateral move to get a job. Right, right. He has to go sideways to go to yeah. a worse organization. Because they feel like the only reason he's even good is because of Patrick Mahomes and Reed. Like he has no you know, part you know, and of Andy Reed, not because of Eric Bieniemy and his mindset and his ability. So he has to go to the Washington Commanders to prove that he deserves a head coaching job. You know, so man, I just want everybody to man to hey pay attention to the show also. We need nine more, y'all. We had 341. <laughs> nine more subscribers. I run around this mud with two Apple watches. Bling, bling. Sign up. <laughs> New way, <Eve. laughs> So, all right, folks. Well, hey, uh, for my final comments, I'm just going to say, as always, great conversations. I always think we have uh, very thought-provoking conversations. On this show. Uh, hey, what, hey, what'd you say, Matt? What'd you say it was Matlock versus who? 
Matlock versus Perry Mason. Oh, <laughs> that's right. And, and rest, <laughs> and rest, <laughs> in, peace. rest hey. in peace. To, rest in peace to my puppy. Uh, my 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 dog ended up giving birth to one puppy. Wow! And it, and it passed away, and I'm oh, mad. I'm so about sorry that. about that. Right it was oh. it was so, it was Kobe 2.0. So the male I got, it was his split image. I was I was heated, but mm. you know sometimes it happens. <laughs> sometimes it happens. Well, hopefully, uh, I doubt Luna and, and, and Slinky Dog if we, they have any puppies anytime soon. So. <laughs> I've been I've been trying to convince Cassandra, but she's like, hell no, I trained this one. I don't want to train more. But I'm like, look, <laughs> we could have a whole family of wiener dogs. We could have Hoagie. Yeah. We could have uh, you know, a, a pack of sausages. Uh, Italian roll. We a pack of sausages. One <laughs> Italian roll. I mean, come on. Oh, that's now. right. An Italian roll. Italian roll. Italian roll. So we could have Nathan's, uh Hebrew National. Um, uh, anyway, my point Kill is Bossa. <laughs> Have yourself a great one. Make sure Grindr. you comment and subscribe. And Dewey. This is the On The Hunt Podcast. Have a good Peace one. Peace, brothers.